Hello, Fork Bubble. Uh, good evening. This is in the past. Uh, this is a recording of an actual play of the game Die, which I wrote to tie into our own comic. Uh, me and Stephanie Hands. Uh, it's a fancy role-playing game comic. It's very meta. Uh, I will exp explain the game as we go through it, basically. Uh, but I'm joined by some famous uh, comic celebrity friends of mine. Uh, could we please go around clockwise and introduce ourselves, starting with Chip. I'm, uh, I'm Chip. Chip is Chip. Tell me if you've ever played a role-playing game before, Chip. Uh, I have not played a role-playing game. Good work. Thank you. Smooth. Marguerite. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marguerite Bennett. Um, you might know me from DC's Bombshells or Batwoman or Animosity. Um, I used to play a lot of role-playing games, um, d d Scion, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, but it's been a while. <laughs> Amazing. Ed, you're next. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Ed Brubaker. Uh, uh, that's my name. I've played role-playing games as a kid and uh, started out watching my brother and his older friends play role-playing games from the side and waiting for one of them to get kicked out so I could take their place. And I got <laughs> stuck playing a... Uh, what are those priest guys who talk to the forest? One of those. Trudes. Yeah, I got stuck with a druid. It sucked. So uh -huh. hopefully this will go better than that. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Emma. Uh, hello, I'm Emma Vicelli. And um, in real life, I write and draw. Currently writing Life is Strange and drawing Modern Frankenstein. Um, and games-wise, yeah, I grew up playing many games because real life sucked. So most of my life was played through games. Um, and now I don't play as many as I used to, but I do laugh. So it's kind of like RPG plus, I guess. Um, so <laughs> minus. coming back to table, <laughs> or minus, depends how you view it, you know. Um, but yeah, coming back to tabletop is fun. Excellent. And Matt Fraction. Hi, I'm Matt Fraction, and uh, I have read uh, way more RPGs than I have played. Excellent. Okay, the normal game of die is takes the form of a we, the players generate a group of friends who have a, who played D and D years ago, then get together years later to play a game just as, for some reason or another, and then disaster happens. <laughs> uh, in this uh, in this case, since it's a con, I'm going to run a completely different scenario. In this game, everyone around the table it, or everyone around the table are people who used to work on a comic together or are connected to the comic in some broad way. Uh, this comic, um, various things happened, uh, which we're gonna end up discussing as the game plays, and things have gone wrong. We've gathered some time later to play a Zoom game of um, an RPG. Uh, we gathered together by the editor. For some reason you've all, all the other people have accepted it. Right, uh, and now we kind of start by generating who we are. I'm gonna say, okay, the first question is, at, before we started this game, I we discussed who would be each one of these kind of archetypal people. Could I, we go around and say who you are, as in you know your job title? I'm playing the editor, Chip. Uh, 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 that's all I have. Right. I have, have the fool, and I've, I've circled it. Uh, we filled out the doodle, no, no. and I indicated things oh, that I like. Just no, no, not for, as in the um, your job title, as in you're the fan. Yes. Am I okay? Yes, I'm the fan. Yes, oh, we're gonna write that down. I was gonna say yes, your job yes. title. Yes. Do you so email us that? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I said that at the same time. To be honest, I can actually just I can oh, tell you. you can just tell me. Okay. I can tell you from memory. Um, okay. Because yeah. I, I selected three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just start diving in this way. Since everybody in that mail would have had it, just think broadly about those sort of people. Like, what of you, and what sort of person that could be? Like, take a deep breath and think, what are the, what are those individuals in this world of ours? And let's start with Marguerite, who is the writer. Congra the Congratulations! You are the creator of a very successful book. What's the uh, what, what's it, what's the book genre? What is it like? Uh, female centric revenge saga. Yes. Female. <laughs> Centric revenge saga. Is that the same? Very great. Moment. This is going to go great, you guys. This is going to go super great. 
I don't know, this, is, this sounds wonderful. <laughs> As I say, uh, who's the publisher? Ed, you're the publisher oh. of the book. Congratulations. All right. Yeah. What's, um, the name of your, what's the name of your company? Uh, Bakery Comics. Bakery Comics. <laughs> no, no, that sucks. Let me... Uh, <laughs> uh, Dominance Industries. That's fantastic. Oh, that's better. That's way yeah. better. <laughs> You have to go, Margaret. If you actually, I haven't actually. I don't ask the name of the book, but if the, if the name of the book ever occurs to you, feel free to uh, say it. <laughs> yeah. He'll probably just say female centric revenge saga. Female revenge, just like the vibe of it is entirely great. Uh, you remember like the catchy. food and repo. You remember the the food and repo man? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like it's beer, beer, food, food. Yeah. female food. revenge saga. Yeah. Also, um, it's like a show on Netflix. Yeah. I say. Like, However, the important question you have now, Ed, you're the publisher of uh, Dominance Industries. So how come you own the rights to the book, not uh, the writer? Well, I mean, when Marguerite was coming up, uh, she was willing to, you know, she was looking for a break and our company just does what our company does, which, you know, we give a contract where the rights are retained by us because we're putting all that risk out. That page rate we paid her was hugely risky. Yeah. Um, it was just it was just our benefit that her genius paid off and i'm you know i'm not ashamed to say that we have a terrible contract well wow, he was too good at answering that yeah. <laughs> also, this game is entirely fiction and of course there's no chance <laughs> any of this bears any relationship it true. just speaks to ed's strength as a storyteller that he's yeah. able to weave such a complex so... web of fiction just off the top of his head like <laughs> okay and finally publisher do you care well, if about? She, if she didn't, she could have taken it to any number of other publishers, and mm. you know, and gotten you know, if she wanted to go to Image, she could have gotten a different kind of deal. But submission, we, submission, dominance is, is dominating a... the market, and we get our books out to people, and you know, so we we helped. Whatever success came to Marguerite after this is partly responsible by you know, our publishing her work. Now, when, when you took over the company, you changed the name of the company from Bakery to Dominance. Why did you do that? I wanted us to, I wanted people out there to know that we were going to dominate the marketplace. Wow. You know, and, and, uh, and fans really like a, uh, a powerful sounding company. They really, you know, you want fans to rally around your label, That's not true. your creators, your label. That's true. Yeah, sorry, I didn't say I said that out loud. I'm so god. Yeah. You're always like, you know, you're paying attention to the brand here. That's very yeah, important. It's all about branding, Chip. Now, here's a question for you, Ed. That does the publisher care about comics at all? Well, I inherited the company from my father, who did really care about comics. He was a lifelong comic fan. I I, I, I interned in the office for as a teenager. Okay, back to Marguerite. You obviously, are, you're a very successful writer. Uh, what's your greatest strength as a writer? I don't have one. I'm just B plus across the board. B plus in niceness. B plus in being on time. B plus in talent. So, I'm not going to burn any bridges, but I'm not like a great genius. Hmm. I give That's good like... value. <laughs> <laughs> when you incorporated, you called your company B Plus Incorporated, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, publisher, what is uh, the what, the writer that Margaret's playing? Uh, what's their greatest weakness? They just can't admit. Well, she didn't have her own lawyer, which I would advise <laughs> <laughs> those creators. Were I not, you know, people who work for other companies, I would advise that they bring their own lawyer into the deal. But otherwise, she's a she's a a plus talent in my estimation. She made our company a lot of money. So it's worth not knowing, Margaret. That it's established you as legally naive and can't admit it. That's the, that's the important thing in that question. <laughs> right. I used to work at the. Uh, I used to work at uh, Bakery Comics and then Dominance Industries as an editor on uh, this wonderful female centric revenge saga. Um, why did you fire me, Ed? Uh. I, it, I hate to say it to your face. You were just, you know, a couple colorists were laid on some jobs and you were trying to give people raises that were kind of hurting our quarterly profits. And I was trying to sell the company to another company. And I needed to prove that our quarterlies would be bigger every quarter because I wanted to sell to worldwide industries. Uh, cool. That's interesting. And so why, what, what's the reason why we're still friendly and in social contact? I mean, I can still help you get other jobs. 
Yeah. I gave you a great reference letter. Yeah. I, thought, I, thought, I quite like the old drinking mates anyway, in that kind of way. It's just, yeah, that's yeah. it too. We, well, actually, I mean, when I inherited the company, you were there and you and I were, you know, we had been buddies at the, at the place. You helped me sort of build what dominance became. And uh, but, you know, when Worldwide wanted to see our quarterlies, I had to ask some high level people to just sort of show them that we were still profitable. And it's nothing personal. I mean, I like you. We're obviously we still have a beer at cons when you're looking for jobs and stuff. Always looking for jobs. Marguerite, what was the worst thing about working with me? Oh, gosh. I don't like being told no. I get very emotional about criticism, and I have to, like, take a day to process notes before realizing, yeah, that was a good point, so. <laughs> you are all being very kind here. It's, we're, uh, we're, allowed to, we're allowed to paint ourselves into being monsters. I mean, my, no my notes were too mean. <laughs> okay, Ooh, next. let us move to uh, Emma V. You're an artist on oh. the book. You were oh, co yeah. You were the co-creator of our female-centric revenge saga. Have you any other elements that are important in the book, you think? You know, uh, what, what elements to the lead character did you really contribute visually? Um, um, I, I really enjoy designing her outfit, because uh, it's something I like. I'm, I, I'm very excited to be on this, this, uh, this project, because this is like my first time I've got to design my own character, and uh, Marguerite's character, uh, Marguerite's this is confusing. Marguerite's character sheet is big, not the character in the comic. I'm like such a huge fan. Um, uh, we met that time I came to your convention table and I was like, oh my God. Um, and now I'm getting to make a book with her and I got to design the lead character. Um, and yeah, so exciting. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> well, however, Emma, I mean, obviously it was amazing times to be working in that book. Uh, but why did, but when did you quit and why? Um, I hated you. I just, yeah. <laughs> I, I might have secretly sent the uh, publisher a note saying that, like, I just couldn't work with you. <laughs> wow, this I imagine that made me, Roman. That was, I will verify, I, I moved her over to Hat Lad for a while, and then, uh, you know, we've been talking about Emma creating some of her own stuff for us to own. That's great. Uh, oh, question, uh, Emma, your artist. Of course, uh, when did your art start getting worse? When, so I, the, the, I'm going to say for anyone watching, the line keeps cutting out for me. I've got such a bad connection. Sorry, what was the uh, last no, no, thing you said? When did your art start getting worse? Uh, your character. Gosh, on, week, <laughs> on week two, it started getting worse because um, I realised that I'd never drawn a sequential comic page before. Um, you know, I was usually drawing characters. And they could, I could pose them, but um, and I, I did. To be fair, I said that I was really ready, and I'd drawn loads of comics. And the, the truth is, I, I hadn't. Um, so I'd say probably it started getting a bit worse when I realised how hard it was to draw comics. Oh dear. And so, art, and so finally, artist, why did you decide to come back for another run on the book after after leaving, or quitting rather? Because I was awful. I. Was, so, did, sorry, did I quit or did you come No, back no, you said, you, you said, uh, I like, you quit the book, remember, because I was impossible oh, to yes. work with. However, so you've come back oh, for yeah. a second run on the book. Why? Yeah, um, it, you, you've gone there? I don't, I've lost track of the time. Yeah, I've gone. Have you yeah, gone I've completely. Yeah. yeah, basically, I, it could be just because I've gone. It is a kind of logical answer. Yeah, so I think um, I was a bit uh, disillusioned early on because um, all my, you know, I was so excited and getting to work with Marguerite's character was just a dream come true. And and then you were just like really harsh and it, it kind of hurt my confidence a bit. Um, so I realised it was too much for me. Uh, but then uh, Ed's character uh, and Marguerite's character sent me lovely notes after you'd gone saying, you know, how welcome I was and how... Uh, cheap I was as well, um, so, so maybe if I wouldn't mind, would I be up for trying again? And obviously for me, the, the flame was reignited, the dream came back, and 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 um, yeah, and it was just magical at that point. This is one, honestly, like just get rid of the editor. This seems to be the solution to this industry problem. I'm so sorry, um, Kieran. No, no, this is delightful. I love this. Uh, Here's the added complication: we had sold the rights, and I was expecting a big movie or tv franchise out of this and i really wanted her to come back you know the original artist to come back to 
So yeah. we had product to have on shelves at that. She, so she, she could ink the movie adaptation. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Marguerite, uh, finally, this book was your big hit, your only big hit. Why do you think that is? This is the thing that I'm the most passionate about, and everything else is going to feel like a repeat of the thing that I'm the most passionate about. So I put all of my favorite ideas into this one, and everything else feels like a diluted strain of this story. That's fantastic. And also very, you know, absolutely. Mar Marguerite's already the hero of this story, as far as I'm concerned. Mar Marguerite, what are, you, what are you passionate about? Revenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the backbone of all my actual books. Over to Chip. Chip, you are a yeah. fan of the female-centric revenge saga. Well, I mean, not only not only a fan of, of that book, but a fan of pretty much everything uh, Dominance Industries Entertainment puts out. Dominus Industries. Uh, why, you know, you're just a fan. You're not in the industry in that way. Why are professionals cool with hanging with you? Well, you know, I think I'm really. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm a, a one of their their pals. Like I don't I don't tend to fanboy uh, over things. Um, you chill. I, I I chill. In fact, I, you know, I'm such a. I'm I'm so much like uh, these creators that they view me as a bit of a creator as well, I suspect, uh, because I'm constantly <laughs> handing them my scripts to That's check out and uh, maybe bring to their publishers. I was about to preempt my next question, Fan. You mm -hmm. want to work in the industry. What yes, job do. do you want to do? Um, well, I want to write, but I don't, I don't really want to write my own stuff. I want to write like uh, 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 Bat Batman and Spider-Man. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then, um, honestly, between you and me, I, I really want to take over Marguerite's book at some point. I feel, uh, especially because with the, the, the with all the potential movie talk that has come and gone, um, they're going to they're gonna need more people in there uh, putting out the product. And uh, again, I'm a huge fan. So you're famous, a huge fan of product. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. OK, uh, Marguerite. Uh, does the fan have any talent in your field whatsoever? Yes, I think so. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I think so. Um, but I think with the the over familiarity, or you know, the moment where we're like really gelling, and then he produces one of his scripts, and it's our previous conversation feel inauthentic and hurt my feelings. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Say that one again. <laughs> I think that when you know we're really gelling, and then he produces one of his scripts for me to read, it makes me feel like the previous conversation was maybe inauthentic. Uh, um, and so I have some reservations about what you're recommending him to because sometimes they're used. Uh, but I really good. like him as a person, and if he just didn't do that, I think we'd get along really well and maybe co right now. Yeah. I, I also don't, I, I, have to, I have to put this out there too. I'm a huge fan of the book. I also don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't, under, I don't understand that it's a, a, a female revenge uh, a fantasy. Like, I identify greatly with the, the, the men being killed in it, and I like it. <laughs> I'm just going to put that there. I'm not saying it's sexual, because I, don't, I know we don't want to get into that, but it is. That's good. You, you like That's the good. Yeah. Right? You like how, how is the fan message board that you moderate going? <laughs> uh, horribly. Twitter has just destroyed the message board. Um, <laughs> as far as the art is concerned, uh, I don't notice it. I'm sorry. Um, there was an issue where they swapped out artists, and I just I thought it was you, even though the style was drastically different. I'm unable oh, yeah, we, to we actually. Had that. Yeah, we had yeah, that unfortunate thing at the show where I where I gave you the comic to sign and you'd never drawn it, and, and I insisted I you that. did for like ten minutes. Yeah, you yeah. actually preempt my next question, Chip, which was why is um actually this is more general. Why is Marguerite's new run with Emma's character not as good as the old stuff? Well, um, there's been less murder in it because uh, uh, I, I know Marguerite has been trying to turn the book more um, more away from the violence because she's recognized uh, that the, the the fan base is really grabbing onto the violence uh, and not understanding the reasons for the violence in the book. So she's trying to make it something um, some would say a better book. But oh, yeah. uh, I, I, no, no, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't because uh, I, I came for the I came for the the, the murder. Yeah, you thought you, you can't answer this one as well. But the question was going to be, uh, what do you think is the core reason for the success of the book? Why do people like it? Yeah, the murder. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Murder is important. Murder is important, and, and you know, I'm gonna, you know, I never, I, I always try to not say this to Marguerite or Emma um, when I'm talking about the book, but the lead character is smoking hot. She's so attractive, and I'm very attracted to the character. So I, I, I tend to not bring that up because I don't want to yeah. uh, seem like I'm objectifying the character when really I am. Yes. That's important. Finally, Matt, I think you're hey. uh, you, you have a... Uh, you are actually a critical journalist. You are somebody who. Uh, I'm, a, I'm the, I'm the um, uh, head of the international finance desk for uh, Fangoria magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask, what do you, what sort of sites do you work for? Uh, except, so Fang, international. Uh, Fango, business. primarily Fango. I mean, I started with the Financial Times, uh, but Fango is really my 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 place. Excellent. What what's your beat? Uh, IP futures. <laughs> I was about to say. Uh, also, <laughs> why have you been invited to hang out with all these comic pros? Why? Why do they? Uh, I mean, plus, with ed, 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 there's many options here with your IP future knowledge. I suspect. Sure, sure. I uh, 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 clearly uh, this is a. Uh, uh, being developed for extra media harvesting uh, by Dominance Comics. Uh, I'm, this is clearly they're trying to wine and dine me on a junket. Uh, 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 I'm here to see that it'll get the band getting back together and the team making all the magic happen when we all know that the, the Dominance is, is a, a, a cash poor uh, and IP poor, and they are uh, desperately attempting to farm out whatever IP they can to whomever will, will, will develop it. Uh, 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 they're In other words, that... we're, we're full steam ahead on all of our products. <laughs> <laughs> I think I yeah. think the pen I think pentup pentuple <laughs> monthly shipping has really damaged the quality of the book. Uh, um, I think that uh, Ed's name is above the title on the cover. Uh, uh, Chris created some confusion in the marketplace. Uh, but so most of all, most of all, they 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 think that a, a positive article will will, will uh, uh, increase um, share prices, uh, blah, 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 make the company appear more valuable. And I'm 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 being wined and dined, and I'm letting it happen. But nice. I understand uh, what's going on. I don't know. If the second anybody knows the name of your character and their pronouns, feel free to change your character on screen name to that. Because it makes it slightly less weird when I start saying, is Margaret a good writer or whatever? <laughs> uh, like, so. Um, <laughs> um, so um, do that. See your little picture at the bottom. How do I do yeah. it? You edit your name. Oh, right there. So I'm going to change my name. I'll edit this bit, to be honest. Uh, I don't know how I can do that on. I can iPad. do I can. Hmm. I can change yours if you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for Kyla. K Y L A. <laughs> <laughs> I got my name from my pencil. That's Ooh, good. Mr. Blackwing. So good. Palomino Blackwing. Pa That's Palomino, good. Palomino, like the horse? Palomino, Palomino. Ah, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Blackwing, like, I don't know, that Kate Sorry. Bush Christmas album? Yeah. Emma, shall I change your name? What are you? Morning. Uh, Kyla, K-Y-L-A. If What's I went by name? my pencil, I'd be Kyla Bick. But do I have, <laughs> have a last name? No, no you don't. You can, you can you be like Jock. Uh, are you she, her, or anything else? Go by Kyla. <laughs> yeah. Kyla, are you she, her, or...? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be a she, her. Sweet. Brick Chadwick. I've got... Brick Chadwick's dominance, dominance Comics is all I live for. <laughs> Brick Chadwick. I want, I want to be Brick Chadman. That's fine. I'm dumber. I can change that if you like. I, I got it. Oh, you got it. Okay. okay. We had a little brief gap there, and I will skip back in. Publisher, why do you hold a drudge against uh, Palomino Blackwing? I wouldn't say it's a grudge. He wrote a he wrote a thing. I mean, I like Palomino. He's a pal of mine. He uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, oh. wrote a, he wrote a couple articles, you know, during my negotiations with Worldwide Industries that. Uh, you know, talked about some of the things we were doing to make our to boost our sales. Some of these, you know, one in three thousand variant covers that we did. That uh, you know, I mean, you do what you do to get your product out to the customer, as Gary will tell you. And uh, you know, mm. he sometimes takes a, a hard tack on whether we're reaching people or whether we're just, 
you know, creating things to sell in slabs on eBay. And I felt that was a, a, a negative perception of how we're actually dominating the marketplace. I, yeah. I, I will say I did have to take a, uh, a part-time job with dominance in the, the stock room to afford uh, mm. all the variants that they were putting out. And he, mm. to, to be fair to Brick, he did give me a 10% discount on the variants I was purchasing from them. Yeah. yeah. And of, of course, though, it was, it was Fangoria... It, it was Fangoria that broke the news that the pre-slabbed comics that Dominance was making were, in fact, blank inside. Mm -hmm. That's uh, never been which proven. Was quite, quite a scandal. We, we proved it definitively. We proved it I, definitively. I, I contest that that was a mix-up variant where the fan could draw their own comic. And that you own the rights I'm to, which Dominance would then own. Yeah, which, which I would, of yeah. course, the best one would be published as the next issue. I mean, it, yeah. Unfortunately, just, no one has completed the because it's in a slab and it's yeah, very hard to understand. It's hard to. Well, I think we could leave this argument here and possibly pick up in character later at sword point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but at least the question is, uh, uh, Livia, uh, why do you have a, a weird sort of sneaking admiration for Palomino? Oh goodness. Um, I mean, it is it is important for the world to know these things, and I wish that I had been less legally naive back in the day when I was starting my career. And so, while I understand that my ship has sailed, um, you know, I don't wish that other writers or artists fall into the same trap that I did. Yeah, did, did, Palom did Palomino give you like some advice after the fact when he saw what had happened? Yeah. So yeah, it's one thing if you know and you choose the deal anyway, but uh, if you don't know any better, it's yeah. better. I will say. <laughs> We currently pay Livia a much better page rate. She has gone up twenty dollars a page since the original days ten years ago, and you've doubled her money, at, yeah. at least. Yes. But didn't, but didn't you reduce the page count of your books from twenty five pages to fifteen? This is Thir something thirteen and a half. Arthur, thirteen and a half. Arthur was, that was a half. Arthur was really responsible for the content inside the books. I am just, you know, I sign pieces of paper about how much money people get. That's okay. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, he double he doubled the rates while having the, having the content. So yeah, so yeah. I'm paying you twice as much to draw eleven pages. This is really a bone of contention between it's Arthur good. and I. He 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 really wanted to make sure the books were all profitable as the editor, and you know I still I still I don't I don't see what people are complaining about. They come out three times a week. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like I think we should skip the die RPG and just carry straight onto this weird industry <laughs> argument. I, I really like it. <laughs> it just, we had arguments about imaginary books. And, uh, like it was the real talent here. Anyway, more finally, uh, not finally, close to finally though, uh, Gary. Um, hmm. uh, why do you think? Oh, wrong one actually. Uh, fan. Why have you leaked? Um, oh, sorry. Rumors. You the... have to say it again. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Gabby, why did you actually leak rumors to Palomino? <gasps> Gary! Uh, okay, I mean, f first of all, I picked up some things in the stock room, obviously. You know, I, I hear stuff. Uh, Palomino Blackwing might be the coolest person I've ever met. And, uh, and I, I just kind of wanted to get in his good graces. I want to be his friend. That's the thing. I've always been on the outside. He keeps people at a distance, and uh, I really want to be his friend. Um, also, uh, I, I'm a little in love with Palomino. Just Excellent. a touch. Just a touch. I was it's, confusing. it's confusing to me, but when you encounter someone named Palomino Blackwing... A lot of confusion happens. Yeah. So I you like decided it, it, to show him the cliffhanger ending of issue 45. <laughs> I'm sorry. What about that? So you just decided to show him the ending of cliffhanger, the cliffhanger ending for issue forty-five because of that? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, those, I mean, understand. It sounds great. I was about to say. Next question. Uh, hey, it's we half an hour in, and I'm impressed that we've actually only taken this long for romance to enter the field, which is one of these things that could could spring up at any time. So I'm very happy about that. Um, journalist, I, I, I will say I'm torn between Livia and Palomino. Two I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a good couple things going on here. Uh, nothing for Kyla, though. Just nothing for Kyla. I don't know why. Yeah, I, you know, I thought there was a connection at one point, but then you kept looking over my shoulder at, at, at Palomino, and yes. I was like, yes. are yeah. you talking to me? Or I, well, I, I, definitely, yeah, I definitely yeah, wasn't. Yeah. Oh, Gary. <laughs> I thought I could really <laughs> trust you. Um, oh, yeah. Gary, Gary, Gary. Palomino, despite the fact you helped Livia, you think she's just bad at her job. 
Um, why do you think uh, Lydia's bad at her job? Well, I don't think she... I think Livia thinks she's a writer, and and she's not. She is an IP creator. It's a different. Listen, you can you drive a car, you can fly a plane. Functionally, they're the same task, but they're very different. And I think as soon as Livia can shift herself, her perceptions of what she does into the world of IP harvesting and creation, rather than writing, uh, uh, all of the doors previously closed to her in her career Sorry. will open up. Pal Palomino, didn't you actually write a uh, a comic in the '90s, like a failed black and white comic? Oh yes, yes I did. Yes I did. <laughs> okay, I I yeah. trying to remember. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, amazing. Uh, fine artist. Uh, you were used to be. Uh, which of the people around this table, or this virtual table, was your best mm -hmm. friend? Uh, and why did you stop talking? I'm so sorry. The line, I'm hearing like every fourth word. So I'm, try, I'm playing the game and trying to work out what the sentences are when they get to the end. My connection sucks right now. Um, my best friend, well, obviously Livia, because she was my, she was what got me in. Like, I, I just love the world she creates. Um, I mean, it, it's, I, I, I feel like Brick and I have a, quite a connection because we've been we've been talking about potential projects going forward. Um, but I, I feel like I am quite torn with my allegiances because obviously if I continue projects with him, I might not be able to carry on drawing female centric revenge saga with Livia, um, and that's putting me in quite a quandary. I've got to say because um, I'm very protective of the series and of Livia, uh, but I'm also quite ambitious. So it's a, a strange place to be. Um, but I, I, I feel pretty awful that I had that conversation with Gary in the bar about about issue forty five now because um that's that really backfired horribly. Issue forty five is pretty messy. Right, I'm going to go around the table, yeah. starting with Gary, then Livia, then Brick. Who is your hero figure? Who's my hero figure? Yes, Gary. Uh, that, that would be that would be Batman. Okay. <laughs> Well, Are you talking about in the game, like the thing you sent us? Yes. I was about to, no, no, as in your hero. Ch Chip's answer is the same either way. Batman is, <laughs> yes. basically. Yeah. Uh, you're, the character, Gary, who is their hero figure? Who do they look up to in the, in the world? Uh, in other words, Batman is a perfectly justifiable answer. You know, um, the president, a philosopher, a writer. You know, it could be, you know, it's literally who's your hero figure. Yeah. Batman is all of those. Anyways. Yeah. Libya? <laughs> I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Clarice Starling. Wow, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Brick. Martin Goodman, probably, or or you know any of the any of the early pulp publishers that really knew what they were doing. Cool. Uh, Kyla, what's who's Kyla's hero? Oh God, this is I, I'm, I'm just even choosing my own. Um, no, I'm going to say me. I Emma am Fischelli. my hero. <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> Kyla, Kyla. <laughs> Who is it? Kyla is an ego, egomaniac, right? We've got this now. <laughs> um, yeah, Kyla is is Kyla's own hero. She's the star of her own tragic story that she she hopes she's going to win. <laughs> and finally, uh, who's Palomino's hero? You know, journalists can't afford to have heroes. It affects our. <laughs> Objectivity and ability to report the facts without picking sides. Yes, it's like kind of what, what an awful group of like hero lacking monsters you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and equally, going around the table, but in the opposite direction this time. So Palomino first. Why don't? Why did you think the TV show of um, female centric revenge saga uh, didn't happen? Can I go first? I can, I can, I think I can handle this if I go Please. first. Uh, in this post peak TV landscape of vertically integrated multimedia <laughs> conglomerates, dominance was still horizontal. The comic was over here, the toys were over there, the animation. First off, we can talk about the relevance of developing it as an animated Saturday morning cartoon in a world where there aren't Saturday morning cartoons anymore. Uh, but also, tonally, it was it was a mismatch. Uh, 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 rather than all being under one kind of encompassing corporate blanket, dominance was was scattered uh, to the winds. And ultimately, the people that run the ledgers for these companies 
will never go for those. They want to own everything and control everything in house. It's a poor management by 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 Brick Chadman, uh, in, in, uh, inside and out, and a fundamental twentieth century uh, uh, perspective on a twenty first century media landscape. Okay, well, I, I, I've won awards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fangoria awards, though, which is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Fango. I won the Fango yeah. award. Yeah. Fangoria yeah. Yeah. And, uh, awards. Yeah. and the Office Mate of the Month. Yeah. Excellent, uh, Kyla. What about you? Why do you reckon the TV show didn't get made? So why do I think it didn't make Why do you think made? the TV show? Uh, Same question. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, Palomino's write-up probably didn't, didn't help us massively because it got a lot of traction. It went viral and it was really damning. Um, also, that damn 45 ending that Livia and I were so excited about, that twist that we thought was great, by the time it got kind of blabbed out everywhere, um, there was a lot of like bad reaction to it and I, I think that probably picked up momentum um annoyingly uh i think i still had some hope that there was going to be something to be saved because palomino sent me an email like uh about like a game what was it like a toy developer or something and you were asking for designs of the main character for a toy developer and i assumed it was all being done through through brick obviously uh but i that got my hopes up that did get my hopes up but um so why do i think it didn't work i don't know unlucky probably we're very unlucky um, cool. timing, you know. Cool. Brick? What about Brick? What does Brick think? Well, I mean, at the time we first tried to sell it, as Palomino said, it may have been a slight error to target the uh, youth market specifically for the amount of violence that would have been in the cartoon. But I, I will say many of the streaming platforms were looking for a hard-edged uh, cartoon. Just at that point, not one aimed at women more. And now I still have, look, I have not given up on this project and we are still talking to many, many, many smaller production companies that are trying to get people to possibly develop a pitch to take out. I, I it, it is if still, I can, if I can do it's, still here, I know it's, it, it's exciting that pets.com has gotten into the scripted content game, but you're, you're pardon the phrase, barking up the wrong tree. Look, we are, we are talking to Quibi right now about a, <laughs> A shorter version of a live action for uh, for they they want to change the main character to a man for some reason, and we've had some some bad back and forth on that. But I, you know, I have not given up. It, it this product is still a product that we oh. control and own. Olivia, what do you think? I think they were interested in making changes to make the book a lot more marketable that I felt were contrary to the core meaning of the story. Excellent. And finally, Gary. Oh, has well, frozen. First of all, everyone's sorry. I'm back. You're back. Uh, first of all, everyone's everyone's wrong. Uh, uh, it's because when they announced the pilot, the lead actress wasn't hot enough. Didn't look like the character. Like it's as simple as that. Like the fans, the fans just aren't going to stand for it unless the, the they look the same as the character. And their body, the shape, the beautiful shape of the main character is reflected in, in the actress portraying. It's not racial. Yeah, I, I know what you're the, thinking. It's not racial. The, the four prosthetic arms weren't done great in the pilot. Um, but that would have got better. That would have got it better. Seemed, it just it seems there's been multiple versions of this, uh, this thing development, and it's all kind of, called it kind of sad. There's confusion not, in the marketplace, which isn't helping. And, no. and uh, uh, there's a, a memo going around that's been leaked to us here at Fangoria that, that, that is literally, it sounds like a joke, but does she have to be female and does it have to be about revenge? Uh, 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 it's a, it's a, uh, there's a, they're fundamentally changing the IP and they don't know what they have to begin with. They don't, they're selling it to people who don't know how to sell it. And they're trying to change the formula to please the market rather than the consumer. And I, I fully agree with Palomino. I fully agree with Palomino. It's not just because I need his attention. <laughs> we are look. We are looking at multiple options to reach the widest possible amount of subscribers that will pay for seeing this IP that we generated. That's all. That's all. And if Palomino doesn't understand how the business works, even though he runs the business side of uh, Fangoria, I mean. This is just a fundamental disagreement. I, I'm with Gary. Wait. Excellent. 
<laughs> right, um, clearly it's contentious. Has anyone got an idea for the name of this book yet? Female centric revenge saga. That's what it's going to be called. That sounds great. <laughs> we should leave it to Olivia the writer. We should leave it to Olivia the writer. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but what, do, what do the fans <laughs> call it? Like, what's the short uh, version of that? Olivia? Femrev. That works. Femrev? Femrev is great. Femrev is great. Great. I love it. Femrev. Oh, that, be, that sounds fantastic. That's what we're going to call it when we reboot it. Who gets the copyright <laughs> to this? And she's a car there? driver. Right, everyone. I think we've got enough. We have a wonderful group of people, or, you know, wonderful certain value of. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn off our cameras and we're going to step away. I'm going to go get a glass of water and probably go to the toilet. Uh, you can do whatever you want. When you come back in, like, no more than five minutes, uh, come. we'll turn the things on and you'll enter the stream as if you are the character, as if you've logged on to play with Arthur Davis, uh, a game of RPGs. So Let's... And- Hey. Kyla! Kyla Livia! Hey. Oh, thank you, dear, my fair. How are you guys oh, doing? Hey. Yeah. Oh my god! I feel like I've not seen you guys for ages! It is. Oh my god. I can't believe you two. It's, I'm sorry for saying this, but you two being on time and first, you know, that never happened when we were working together, did it? We, we, we could be honest now in that way. Oh, yeah, no, I guess. I guess. I guess we can now. I guess we can now. No, no, I don't think. So you just, you've been like, old you, Arthur, you were so harsh. I hit all my deadlines, damn you. Yep. Oh, occasionally with, the, occasionally with the quality dips. But look, sorry, we're not here to talk about the uneven drawing style. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Especially because the, the press are here. But see, oh, wow, yeah. But this is the nice thing, you see. We became better friends after we stopped working together. I feel like, you know, we're solid yeah. now. It's fun. This is going to be cool. It makes it easier. How about you, Olivia? How are you doing? Making ends meet. Hoping this book is a success. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, I'm really hoping this is the thing that, that you know upgrades all of us to the next level. Everyone seems to have wanted this for so long. Yeah. Livia, everything you write is gold. You know this. Like, I, I will always be your biggest cheerleader. You know that. Uh, and the famous man of the Fangoria Press is joining us this evening. How are you, uh, Palomino? Uh, remain convinced that the success of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the uh, primal wound in a Campbellian sense that uh, comics continues to try to heal from, the realizing that healing and closure is a myth. We can only grieve and move forward. How are you? I, I, I empathize with every single word you said, to be honest. <laughs> hey, it's Gary. I'm the boss. How are you, man? What's up? Man, I'm just so uh, I'm crazy happy to be here. Hey, Gary, how's your, uh, how's your little project going, Gary? I uh, heard you were getting some traction with it. <sighs> well, you know what? Uh, I've been shopping it around to a bunch of publishers, including to Brick, I might add. Um, it's a little thing. It's kind of like kind of a female revenge story. <clears throat> um, oh, and, I didn't and, think you were uh, into those. I'm, I've been getting a lot of good notes on it, which I think is, uh, I've, I've heard is the, uh, the best part of the process. So it's going well. Oh, you know, Gary's, still will be at your table. Yeah, Gary's got a, <laughs> Gary's got a uh, very unique take on the female revenge. It's more of the man's point of view, but we think it's mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. cool. We think yeah, it's what yeah. fans are really looking for also, as well as. Yeah. Right, yeah. like a B-side, yeah. It's, a, it's an un- mm-hmm. uncovered part of the market. Yeah, yeah. Brick, don't take this the wrong way, but there's definitely sometimes I'm glad you fired me. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> burn. I mean, I, we're still talking. I mean, oh, no, no, there's always a chance that that you might, I, I might need a new EIC something. <clears throat> really? Yeah. I mean, you know, Tom Brevor is not going to last here forever. <laughs> That's Tom with T H O M, obviously. Yeah. A very Tom, different and legally distinct entity. <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, I thanks everyone for joining me. Honestly, I found this this something I wanted to play, and I just felt like this. It's amazing to play with you people. Uh, this is like. Does everyone remember? Obviously, in the 1990s, not all of us were like making black and white indie comics like Palomino. Uh, did you hear that urban myth? You know the one in the, about those British kids in the 90s. Oh yeah. It oh, was right, like basically. Right. Six kids sat down to play a role-playing game. And then like, they were just wet disappeared for two years. No one knows where they went to. Two years later, they come back 
don't tell anything about anything at ever. Right. I've got right. I've got hold of a copy of this game. And, well, you know, the, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's I, a real okay. game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like trust. It's a load of like papers. You've got to print it out. I got off the internet. You know, it's just like obviously it probably isn't the real one, obviously, but it might be. And of course, it's just got just Halloween weekend. So I thought this might be a fun thing to play. I know it's a bit creepy, okay. but you know, uh, no, yeah, fem rev is nothing but creepy. I always say. <laughs> yeah, that's totally what we were going for. Uh, Editor of the title, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I've, I've sent you some stuff, which, uh, <coughs> like, if you open those packages I sent you via the printer, uh, you just sort of say, basically, we're going to make. You've got to make a character. So, like, you see your sh sort of sheets, yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Right. I've told you what character. Uh, uh, I've got to hand out some dice to you. Right. Um, uh, first, let's start with uh, Livia. You've got a dice, haven't you? I sent you. Let me say. Okay, I've got to read this out. Uh, this is your die. There's no other dice like this in the whole game. This is special. This is yours. Use it well, Godbinder. Apparently. Mm. Now you, Brick. Godbinder. Got your dice? All right. This is your dice. There's no other dice in this whole game. This is special. This is yours. Use it well, Neo. Kyla, you got your dice? Okay, this is like a magical... Re Maybe I should do it in a spooky voice, but like, honestly, <laughs> the instructions are pretty bad. Uh, oh, yeah. This is your die. There's no other dice like this in the whole game. This is special. This is yours. Use it well, Emotion Knight. Mm. Um, Palomino, you got a dice? Yes. All right. This is your dice. There's no other dice like it in the whole game. This is special. This is yours. Use it well, Dictator. Hmm? <laughs> And finally for Gary, <coughs> Gary, you've got your dice? Yeah. Okay, 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 let me say this. Um, this is your die. This is exactly the same as every other die in the game. There's nothing special about this die at all. This dice, <laughs> this dice kind of sucks. Yeah, no, I, I, I bought it at Game Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah. Use it well. Ago. Use it well, fool. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's apparently what we've got to say. Right, everyone's wow. got a character. So you've got a character sheet now, which says you're, we've got to basically fill it in to work out who we are going to be in this game. Okay. Right. So like, we we'll, we'll sort of go for this together and fill it in. So I've got one here because I'm playing the master, whatever that means. Uh, I reckon there's a little bit of text at the start it, on your sheet. See, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sort of flavour tests. Uh, do you want to read that aloud? Like starting with uh, like Livia, then Brick then Kyla, then Palomino, <coughs> then finishing with Gary. Okay. Can, can you just read it, just so everyone know who you're going to be playing? The God Binder. You don't believe in gods. I mean, they exist, obviously. You owe the fire god for that time you burned that fortress, and you've got that favor to the god of the wild, and you saved your rainforest, but believe? That's a strong word. Really, no, you don't believe in gods. You believe in tools. Useful tools. The God Binder is the D&D cleric as demonology. This is very 90s. Uh, Brick? I am the Neo. Adventurers' lust for gold makes them all thieves, which makes the prejudice against rogues a little odd. They all do it. But everyone knows why people are suspicious about the Neo. The Neo's magical technology needs to be activated by fair gold every day. It disappears every dawn. If they can't find enough, then all their gifts mean nothing. They chase it. Some practically, some obsessively, most selfishly. Adventurers all want gold, but only the Neo needs it. I feel like you chose this one because of who I am. I know. That's like, I, like, I just fall the it, it is a bit, I'll admit, it's a bit weird. Uh, but like... I mean, I like it. I mean, you, you allocated these though, Arthur. You know, take, take uh, responsibility there. Okay. Uh, apparently, since I am an emotion knight, uh, these eight orders of knights are the world's greatest warriors. Oh, yeah. Each devoted to a single emotion, whether it be joy, hate, or fear. If they feel it, they can use it to fuel the power of their sentient arcane weapons. Oh, this is cool. When consumed by their sacred sensation, they are incomparable warriors capable of miraculous feats. Nothing can stand against their blades, armies, mountains, even ideas. They can defeat anything except the passion which drives them. Yes. Very wow. Good. Mm. Is that you, Kyla? Uh, Palomino? 
You know, first off, this would make a tremendous piece of IP. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> the, the dictator. You read a sad story. You cry. Do you think that's sinister, as if someone has taken over your emotions? Of course not. That's just what art is. Anyone who's ever met a dictator would disagree. By performing, they alter other people's emotional states. Dictators play people like a musician plays a harp. They can pluck the strings. They can snap them. In D&D terms, they're like bards, if everyone was fucking petrified of bards. <laughs> Amazing. These, these are very fitting. Yeah, all right. A lot. And Gary, do you want to give us a shot? Sure. Uh, apparently I'm the fool, which uh, I don't know if that means a thing here. Um, always look on the bright side of life. 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 Side of life. And if I don't, things will be worse. Fools rush in and their friends have to deal with the consequences. Wow. All right. I don't, I don't, I've never played RPG before, so I don't know what that means. Yeah. Uh, yeah we thought, we'll work this out. It's, it's, it's right. Apparently, it's a cooperative game. You know. Okay. Okay. The, oh, we've got to work together. Oh, we I've got, I mean, just cooperative, but like they said, it's like, it's like, they said it's like being in an office, like everyone's on the same team. But I did find myself reading the rules and thinking, is that really true? <laughs> like, there's many cooperative games which aren't really. Anyway, I'm playing the master. Uh, the master is the magic user as reality manipulator. Sometimes you change the laws of physics. Sometimes you change the laws of the game. Sometimes you change the laws of fiction. The rules rule, and you the rule the rules. You never, ever cheat. Ever. Stop looking at me like that. Which I think uh, someone's contesting too much. Arthur, are we just in your power fantasy right now, dude? I am. I'm an, I'm an editor. I'm just here. To, I'm here to facilitate your fantasy. Uh, like that is uh, apparently how it works. As that's what GMs are. Right. <laughs> We're going to have to go through. Basically, we fill in some numbers. So I'm going to start on the top right here. Basically, you've got to fill in your stats. Stats describe how mm -hmm. good you are at shit. Basically, Gary. Uh, and so you can sort. We have a little description of what each stat does beneath. But that's kind of quite self-explanatory. Um, all the stats start as two. And you have two points to increase any of the stats by one. Sort of words, you can have two stats which are free. One stat is. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. all start, all stats start at two, and then if you want one, and then you have two points to increase uh, any of them by. Like. So, so, gotcha. so I got two. I've got two extra points that I can allocate. That's the one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. And uh, and like your underlined ones. Oh yeah. The, uh, the Thank you, Carla, for paying. Uh, the underlined ones are the ones that are particularly important to your sort of that. Uh, yeah, apparently. So, so can I decrease them? No. Nope. Can I take yeah. a... The, everything's at least two. Everything's at least two. Apparently, you like, one like, to, You can add one to two of them or two to one of them? Either. Yeah. yeah Which yeah. one would gotcha. be best for me to find a tool easier? Intelligence or wisdom or, or dexterity? Yeah. One that's underlined is normally best. If it's like Neo, dexterity is pretty good choice. Okay. Oh yeah, I see dexterity or intelligence. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. It's worth it. Like, like we can we can always change our mind later if we decide we made bad choices. Uh, unlike, for example, signing contracts, Olivia. Eh? Uh, Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, Olivia. Hey, I, no I work just couldn't let it now, go. Guys. I, by the way, have never actually seen this contract. Everyone has said there is a contract that has been signed. It has never been produced for review uh, by a, by a, a, a independent party such as the hardworking journalists at Fangoria Magazine. I just want to put that out there. That, that there is uh, alleged. Also, no one has ever reviewed this contract. There are NDAs in place tonight. to cover. Yeah. I was about to say, it's also with it, since it's actually a Google Doc, fill them in on your sheet, but if you want, also fill them in on the Google Doc. So the people, for example, watching at home might be able to see them. That way, Kyla, you can just tell me yours and I can fill them in. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, about, well, I've, we, I've raised strength and constitution by one each, and everything else is two. Sweet. I was about to say, um, of course, we can also do this in the gap at some later point after we've gone through it all. Yeah, I, I went. I added one to dexterity and one to intelligence. That's great. 
So everyone's got their stats. Next section, I think, on the sheet is equipment, which is whatever you want to wear. So you, you put, you, everyone's got different options there. So you kind of pick which ones you like, I guess. Seems legit. Hmm. Right, to be honest, there's a lot so of rules. A, just a check: is defense like you're less likely to get hit, and armor is that when you get hit, it hurts less. Uh, no, defense armor is basically what you just what you're wearing, and defense is how good your armor is. Oh, you start with all the following. Yeah, to be honest, you have different ones. In the case of Gary, I believe Gary has like two of any of those uh, options. It's true, I do. Oh, great. Yeah. So do you just circle the one that you have? or Oh, wait, you have all of them. Sorry. Yeah, it depends on your shape. Plus, all of them have different options. Some of them, it says you have all of these, then pick some of these options as well. Uh, yeah. But it's always yeah. like, just pick, sort of pick what you fancy wearing. That's always a kind of a, a good way. I like wearing martial arts. Yeah. So it's like, in the case of, like, uh, Gary's character, they've always got a defense of two, no matter what they choose to wear, because fools are kind of lucky, I guess. Mm. Um, that means they're that's, hard to hit. It's true for me. <laughs> yes, we know. Uh, can I can I can I just say I feel very lucky to be uh, playing with all of you. Oh, well, I'd say like seventy five percent of you are heroes of mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna as yeah. ever try and not read too much into what you just said. Yeah. There. <laughs> the next section is your look, as in what clothes you wear. As you notice, I mean, I've got options. They're kind of like, these are just kind of like, whatever. Mine's are robes straight out of a 1980s kids cartoon, killer suit straight out of a 1980s corporate bad guy, or fetish wear straight out of a 1990s vampire LARP. All my own idea. <laughs> I'm going to choose fetish wear straight out of a 1990s vampire LARP. Uh, which I didn't I meet you at Labyrinth when we were playing Vampire the Masquerade? Don't remind me of that. Don't remind me of that, please, Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Well, it also, has never been verified. Produced and it has never been verified independently. <laughs> what that we met at Labyrinth. Um, yeah, yeah, we didn't think it was relevant at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Inter just interesting omission from everyone. A memory everyone seems to share, but can't produce evidence of. Cool. Uh -huh. Excellent. The next section is all like the defensive stats are kind of all stuff which is derived from other stats. So you can get them by adding stuff together. You may note, actually, the online spreadsheet does the math automatically for you, mm. which is quite clever. Uh, it implies that somebody has mastered Google Docs. That's very clever. Awesome. Yeah. It, it's also, I had a time to pick up extra skills when I was actually laid off, so I thought learning some basic uh, spreadsheet <laughs> stuff would be useful. So it, it did it for me, except for guard and health, which are blank. Yes, that's basically your initial guard and guard and health kind of, or basically they go up and down depending how much you're hurt. Okay. Yeah. Like, guard is basically, have you got your guard up? And health is, are you being stabbed? Uh, yeah. 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 I don't have anything for defense on mine. Is mine supposed to say something? It probably says at the top of your equipment, as in it says your defense counts as, what are you playing? You are playing the uh, Neo. So your defense is one, I imagine. Oh, okay. I can check so on the PDF. Yeah, the on the... Yeah, the Neo defense is, you always wear leather armor, which is defense of one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, sorry, Arthur. I'm going to be annoying as well. Uh, I've chosen leather <laughs> armor, so it's oh, armor one. But, um, oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah. I don't know where I should put that. You should put it in the square that says armor. Uh, sorry, defense, which is at the bottom of the page. Oh, defense. Okay. Cool. Guard. Dexterity. I so can't my Initial guard is three, and then I have nothing for regular guard. Yeah, uh, we'll explain that when we get into the game. Basically, okay. your initial, your 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 guard and health uh, will be equal to your initial guard, initial health to start at the game, and then they'll get then they'll, Basically, have you played video games when you have a health bar? Yeah. Basically, your initial guard, initial health, the size of your health bar. Okay. So, what would mine be? Do I need to know that right now? No, uh, like there it's. Your this initial... is health plus constitution. Uh, yo, who, who on earth wrote that? It's health equals constitution. It's oh, health small. equals constitution. Oh, okay, so it's two. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah. Cool. I just no that because it's tiny and I'm old. Uh, no, no. Uh, it's like, uh, this is actually, these are Ryan Hughes designed uh, character sheets in, pa in question, but so oh, it's like, like, they're, very, they're very elegant, but in very small font. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. fine. I'm told. Now Not I... sure if, the... Uh, the second sheet is your bigger abilities. So these are like the really fancy stuff, which are probably relatively complicated, but we'll work our way through. 
Um, basically, everyone has completely different choices here. I've got to choose like whether I'm in, what sort of GM I am. So I'm going to choose to be a narrative GM. I could have been a gamist GM well, or a simulation you... GM. And I can choose some rules. I'm going to be a master of fire, range, nice. and area, which apparently I can tie that shit together. Now, everyone has... Basically, I believe Palomino has to choose one emotion they, they can fuck around with. Uh, Gary has to uh, choose... Actually, what have you got? Oh, yeah, you've got to choose your style at the bottom, which you have to tick a box for. Mm -hmm. Done. Uh, and then you also have to choose... Uh, write, draw a symbol on that dice of yours. I did. Uh, you've, Gary, you, you are literally a natural here. You, you're doing very well. You pick up okay. stuff very well. Olivia, you have to choose your god, I believe. Okay, just one? Yes, just one to begin with. All right. So just tick the, one of them. And you can also <laughs> fill, in the, fill in the names, if you like, as well. Uh, Brick, you have to choose your cybernetic thing. Which, which, uh, based on your research of this game's history, is a gun or an energy blade more effective? That, well, if you're closer, one is better, and if, it depends on how you see it, really. Both are pretty cool. All right, I have an energy blade. People... Yeah, hey, Olivia, do you remember that, that issue where we, uh, where we, we added an energy blade because... I got so bored of drawing normal swords, and we were like, let's just give her an energy blade. That was fun. Oh, that was I remember awesome. that. It's like, what says, like, uh, revenge more than a, a big burning blade? Than an That's energy what... blade. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like your... to point out that just in terms of the toyetic nature of, of IP, energy isn't a thing that it can... You've sold a bunch of handles to children, and it's and then we're boggled why no yeah. one wanted to buy I... handles for swords. Like lightsabers, I... Paolo. We I... said this I... is the time. I thought Livia wrote that in there because Kylo couldn't draw guns. No, that wasn't why, Gary. That was not why. That was... Oh, sorry, no, no, yeah, sorry. No, I, I think you said you wanted more guns in it. I remember, I remember that. Just oh, kids, yeah, kids, no children want to play with handles. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I have the energy blade with the intangible skill. Nice. Mm -hmm. And Kyla, you've got to choose which emotion drives you. What emotion do you think? Uh, no, and that, I believe that's the option you've got to choose. Yeah, guys, I don't know. This is this is a really fun choice. I need to choose like an emotional path for my character. So, and it has to be like an emotional path that's going to get bigger as the game goes on. Uh, yeah. If only you put know, this amount of thought into your layouts. <laughs> guys, stop picking on me. He doesn't work here anymore, Kayla. We're still talking about your IP. I mean, our IP. We're right. Still, yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't, yeah. Don't let him get in your head again. Yeah. Our, yeah. We're, this is Friends Night, guys. Um, yeah. I think, Why bring up old actually, shit? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with uh, apprehension, which can then like raise to fear and terror. Do I want that? Do I want terror? How scary is this game, Arthur? I don't know. I think, what, honestly, I, it's pretty scary already in many ways. <laughs> I mean, the people who played it 25 years ago literally hid out for like two years or something and then would never no, say they what. So they were like Tom Hanks in a tunnel under a school. Man. <laughs> I remember mazes. Rona Barrett's Mazes and Monsters. Yeah. Now that is unexploited IP rich. I, it... <laughs> Um, no, I, I'm, I'm going to go, call, I'm gonna go yeah, admiration. We'll talk about that after. I'm going to go acceptance, trust, admiration. It's like it's like my journey with Liv. So I'm going to go that oh, way. Cool. Oh, I'll say, I'm an right, acceptance going, nut. <laughs> going around the circle, starting with Gary, uh, just let's tell us what. Tell, just tell everyone about your picks. Just like brief top view of what you've picked. Don't don't, don't need to explain all the rules. Just say, okay, what, what's your character like? Um, I mean, I think my character is uh, uh, cool and um, worthy of kind of being in in the gang. Um, uh, I'm a smooth talker. I think that's basically my deal. I, I talk true. I talk smoothly, and the smoothness uh, makes people talk uh, smooth to uh, back to me. Pretty smooth. Mm. Thank Olivia. you. Olivia. 
Um, let's see, I'm a holy warrior. I have a two-handed hammer. Uh, that means that when I hit people, they get hit real hard. And um, I have a soundtrack of God. Um, so I have chosen the fire god, Ellen Ripley, from the Alien series, which will be called <laughs> Alien series for legal reasons. Very good. Alan awesome. Ripley. Love it. The god of Alan Ripley. The sixth flame power. There's a fire god you wanted, sir. <laughs> Rick? I have an AI system and an ability to access the fair field. And I also have a technological, techno magical gift, which is an energy blade, which uh, is get is makes people's guard intangible. So I can always hit them with my Sweet. energy. Kyla, sorry. Um, I have uh, my arcane weapon. is a sword. It, it has a brutal special attack. So if it removes one health from an opponent, it actually removes two. Combining nicely with the energy blade thingy, I guess. And then um, this is the best bit. The weapon has a Nerd. My my sword is sarcastic. I've got a sarcastic sword. <laughs> so you're a trust knight with a sarcastic sword. Yeah. I love I, it. Carry on. See how this plays out. This is like Elric Monty Python. <laughs> and Palomino. Uh, I'll, I have a dagger and a ranged weapon. Um, my look is a little bit like uh, M. Bison from Street Fighter, so military, but with a cape. Uh, uh, as I wrote down, Supreme Leader Gaga is kind of the, 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 the look. Um, and then do, do we talk about you want to do into the, the emotional stuff, or is it? Uh, well, I'm an uh, impassionate, impartial observer for Fangoria magazine. I don't have emotions. The emotion I seem to inspire the most in people are apprehension, fear, and terror. Uh, uh, but Excellent. Again, Blast. that is entirely their projections onto my yeah. passionless presentation of the facts. Palomino, my friend, you are not wrong. Now, what we're going to do... Okay, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Uh, but we've got to try it. So can everyone pick up their dice? Mm -hmm. Which one? Uh, you know, the yeah. your magical D8, the one which oh, the, is only the, the you. the special. The your dice. Yeah. As in the, oh, this, I, I can't stress how important this is. These yeah. dice are important. Like, we need to understand this. Like, I want you to... We're going to take this dice, and I want you to slowly lower it to the table. Actually, sorry. Shut your eyes and slowly lower it to the table. Let's do it. Lower it to the table. And release it. And open your eyes. You are swear. You are suddenly, everything has gone, it's just incredibly off. Like immediately you just feel like your skin. It's like your skin is moving through air, which is slightly rough. The idea that the universe is a slight sandpaper vibe. Uh, the walls are gray. And it takes you a couple of seconds to realize you recognize these walls. Uh, they are the, um, you're in a, uh, a room in the Hyatt uh, by San Diego. Uh, so you're literally, it's a normal room, except for the fact that everything about it is abnormal. The light uh, caught falls like daggers through the wall, uh, daggers of uh, off light. You're standing, you're all looking exactly like you do in the real world. Like, you know, you're normal, you're not, you know, you're, you're normal selves. Everything, the only color you can really see are in the middle of the room floating with energy sparking off them, six dice. The same six dice you had, but your dice are suddenly been transformed and magical and powerful. The numbers pulse with weird Lovecraftian energy. Uh, before you can do anything, Arthur looks and says, oh my God, it worked. He grabs his dice, the D20, he picks it up and suddenly uh, there's a, another burst of light and standing before you is no longer Arthur, but it's Arthur who has been to the gym a lot for years. He is a, uh, <laughs> He's basically a, a slick PVC uh, vampire type creature. Uh, he looks like the editor from <laughs> Hell. His eyes, <laughs> his eyes burn bright red as he laughs. And he says, uh, oh, my God, everything's going wrong. I'll meet you in Hall H. It's all going to be it's going to be OK. He clicks his fingers and disappears in a burst of fire. You are suddenly all alone in the room. What do you feel free to feel free to talk to each other? The dogs are floating there ominously. First of all, is this a Hyatt hotel room? Yes. I've never been in a Hyatt hotel room. I was, I'm was, i always like way down the street. So this is, uh, first of all, I'm really excited to be in that room. It's... Yeah, they don't normally look quite like this, though. Like the way things are undulating in a weird way. What, what the? 
I grab don't be, uh, don't, don't, don't like the sandpaper air. I'm I'm looking for my phone because I'm trying to get a hold of Arthur and figure out what the hell just happened. And I have one. You might have a key. In Fifteen minutes. You told me this was just going to be a couple minutes. Yeah, there might be a like, key this, in the mini bar, you guys. But trust me, Brick is going to keep track and send you a bill later. <laughs> <laughs> like, are we? In, is this VR? Is this? Has Arthur set up some like cool VR thing? Gary, like, is there a button? Gary, would you would you try to open the door and look outside and see if everything else is this weird looking? No. Well, Gary, are, are we not going to talk no, about No, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to uh, say that. That was just my instinct because I'm kind of scared. Uh, right. There's a knock at the door. There's a knock at the door. I'll look through the people. I'm going to look through the people. I think that's a good okay. middle ground. So, okay. There's a seven-foot there's a seven foot, uh, dark figure out there with uh, 20 pointed ears. Hey, it's Open Esad. Door. Let him in. <laughs> okay, uh, are they are they uh, Can you stop for a second before you read? Are they, they pointed his, uh, are they pointed like Batman? They are pointed like Batman. However, he opens his mouth and inside his mouth is nothing but razors. Uh, and it, there's a sudden burst of energy as the door is kicked in with incredible violence. Uh, Gary goes flying back across the room uh, to just beneath the, to, ju to just beneath the dice uh, which is floating above you uh, temptingly. Into the room walks Batman or basically if imagine if Batman existed to frighten Batman you know, oh, the yeah. idea, this is like, uh, this is like far beyond any DC crossover would ever take it. There's right. a, an awful... Cosplay is getting so yeah, yeah. good now. Yeah. There is, I'm absolutely, you can, we must presume it because nothing like that could be real. Nothing could be really dripping guano behind it. And it's, uh, it's fingers caked with old blood and, uh, old blood and vomit as he glares at you all. He says, you all rip me off. You all, be, you all live on my body. So as we try to voice, you rip me off. You all made your money from me. So nothing, I'm, but, nothing but parasites, cowardly criminals. Uh, do you do anything? The dice. So I'm I'm underneath the dice right now. Yeah. Can I can I grab mine? Because I feel like that is a thing that can help me. Okay, fantastic. There is a moment you you grab the dice and there's suddenly a rush of power through your body. You find yourself bouncing to your feet instantly. Um, describe how you look now. Describe the awesomeness of Gary transformed. Mm, let's see. I think I, I think I wrote something down here of how I look. Um, well, this is going to be. Uh, uh, let's see. So okay, it's uh, there's no armor per se. It's more of a kind of a full on navy blue leotard, but but it ends up in a really nice V right along here. But um, it, uh, you'd think it would just cover the nipples, but it actually is on the other side of the nipples, like just on the other side of the nipples. <laughs> Almost like my nipples are pressing, pressing it open. Um, uh, I'm not as uh, attractive as I, I want to be in the game or in life. Um, uh, so, so, uh, so my body has not gotten more muscular or anything, um, but, uh, but the, the black fabric kind of comes over my shoulders, past my nipples, and then cascades down to the floor, which conceals my, my arms for the most part. And I've got kind of like, they're like ballerina slippers on. They're quite nice. Yeah, you look awesome, by the way. Thank As you, a, thank you. Like, it's, it's a striking look, and you look yeah, awesome. Thank you, thank uh, you. Lurching in the corridor behind Batman, there are four, um, uh, actually four Batman. Is the best way of putting it. Okay. It's like all it's awful, like uh, splinters of darkness uh, creating him. Made, it looks like it's made of printing ink, like nothing but basically millions of years of comics ground up uh, and turned okay. into like lurching things of hatred. They glare at you with red eyes. Uh, the big Batman is straight in your face. Uh, he says, "Do you think you can take me?" Uh, I, I I ask if he means sexually. <laughs> Great. And it kicks off. He tries to throw punch you. I'm going to tell you how combat works. Okay. I, roll, I roll dice uh, and to see if it hits you, okay. uh, which is the number of dice equal to his stat. His stat in question, he's really tough. He's Batman. He's strength four, which is very strong, as anybody would know. Yeah. Uh, if he rolls four plus is a success. If he gets two successes, he's hit you. Okay. And I'm going to roll this. There we go. He rolls two successes. However, reduce your guard by one, because uh, he's only. Yep. Yeah. What's that? What do I do? 
basically see where your, your current guard is, yeah? Which is your guard is three. Mm -hmm. Now your guard is two, because you basically try to hit you and you dodge out the way. So you okay. when you lose all your guard, you start taking wounds. So it's a, okay. like, basically, you know, like, what's your favorite panel in a comic where somebody dodges something? I'm sorry, say that again? What's your favorite panel in a comic where, you dodge, where someone dodges something in a cool way? Gosh, there's so many when you think about it. It's such a rich history of people jumping out of the way of things. I must say, it's, it's just more like a punching medium, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, uh, I can't off the top of my head uh, think of one. I mean, there there is the the panel in um, in Femrev where uh, where uh, the main character who uh, who never has a name, which I love. Like that means yeah. it could be anyone. Um, where where she goes to. to yeah, uh, where she she goes to uh, to um, uh, punch the uh, the young man who is a who in the story is terrible, but I I, I found him quite likable. Uh, uh, goes to punch him, and um, and uh, uh, her fist travels through the beard because she thought he had a chin, but yeah. he didn't. So it just kind of keeps going through the beard. Um, that's my yeah. favorite, probably dodge. There's this moment, it's like, you, you get this moment, Batman is punching through the, you know, the tassels on your outfit you described, that extended yes. bit, you know, Batman thought you were there, and you weren't, no, and like, you know, no. he's clearly angry. Everybody else, Gary is fighting Batman, or at least some yeah. kind of weird, awful knockoff Batman. Yeah. Like, uh, analogs out, people say analogs out of control, this analog is out of control, and he's literally coming at you all, uh, and with his weird bat helpers. Uh, I was about to say, who's nearest, uh, who, who, who? Who do you reckon is nearest the door? I reckon Palomino was. Or, uh, so, or was Kyla near the door? Well, Brick told Gary to open the door. So, like, was he near the door when he said no, that? No, Brick, <laughs> Brick was as far away as possible. Yeah, yeah he's a publisher. Yeah. Palomino, yeah, you, but, like, you, yeah. you're the first person to get a chance. Are you going to do anything? Yeah, I will go grab my die. Uh, cool. Uh, burst, burst of light uh, hits you. What do you look like now? Uh, like a, like a, 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 a little bit like a dictator, you know, lots of epaulets, lots of hardware on my chest, lots of awards, lots of, uh, uh, but also a cape that's made of sparkles and it's always blowing like Beyonce's hair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, a, hat, a very good hat. Like you can almost, yeah. almost imagine music playing from a really expensive, like Mac advert or something. You know, you've got this kind of like, there's, there's a major brand power happening right here. But but it's a comic con, so it's a short snippet of mu of music playing on an infinite loop. Yeah, that yeah. sounds legit. Right, you are uh, though. There's a, a bunch of these small ones, and the big one that Gary's fighting. Uh, anything you want to do apart from grab the dice? Like now you've had a moment, you've transformed. Um, I'm going to take some notes and watch the way watch how uh, 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 Dominance Industries uh, uh, responds to an adversarial IP uh, in the marketplace. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, you back in away then. I can zoom in. That's, yeah. that's pretty funny. Standing back and you know, that's pretty funny because I seem to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, All of the fans right. of, of of Dominance Industries are in a lot of trouble right now because it is a ship without a captain that is both on fire and sinking. Awesome. Palomino backs away. Kyla has a chance. Uh, Kyla, are you going right. to... You got monsters near you? Are you going to well, run away? Are you going to grab a dice? What do you want to do? We've literally just seen... We've seen Gary transform, right? We've seen Palomino mm -hmm. transform. This is all happening in front of our eyes. Okay, Kyla's just like, okay, they reach for their dice and something weird happened. I'm going to grab my dice. Maybe it's a switch in this game or something. Reaches for the dice. You grab it. The, the DA uh, sears your hand for a second, and there's a uh, there's a pulse through your body, and you transform. You feel like you're being redrawn. What do you look like now, Kyla? So as, as Kyla uh, grabs the die, she like crouches instinctively because it's like, what the hell's going on? She crouches down, and and as she slowly stands up, she's somehow a foot taller, which is kind of weird. She's just grown. Um, she's she's mostly like uh, quite like classic fantasy warrior rogue she's got some like plate but mostly it's leather it's really not very practical um but she look relatively comfortable as fantasy armor goes and especially weird is that she's got a very ragged cape as if it's already seen some damage but it's blowing in a different direction to palomino's cape like she has her own wind source so they're like contrasting winds it's it's um it's very bizarre perfect metaphor for the uh, editorial leadership of of dominance comics Maybe uh, so, but also the yeah. weirdest thing is that she's now holding this. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like well, just... 
I suppose the sword, you're holding the sword and the sword speaks to you and goes, oh, right. you could have you could have picked up the dice sooner, couldn't you? You know, well done. <laughs> Aren't you going to get killing them now, then? Come on, get at it. Uh, yeah, one thing, increase your, increase your trust level to one. As in because the fact you trusted so, everyone else and grabbed the dice means that sounds like you've, you've been kind of trusting right now, yeah? So I move it on to acceptance, yeah? Yes, move your acceptance up to one because you've, you've accepted the reality of this fucking weird... Actually, acceptance two because it really is fucking weird and you've just dived straight in. <laughs> it's really fucking weird. It's, is it Gary seems, all right? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned that, uh, that uh, there's so much detail to your costume considering your art. <laughs> Gary, get yeah. over it. Okay, Kyla, what do you what do you do? So you grab your sword. Oh, sorry, the uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Kyla, you grab the sword. Gary's fighting okay. Batman. Which is, I'm never gonna get bored of that yeah. sentence. I, I'm, Gary's I'm fighting watching... Batman. <laughs> uh, well, Steve, I'm uh... watching someone who was once the biggest fan of my work fighting off Batman, and I've got a sword in my hand, much like an editor telling me I should do something stupid. So, um, so I just like start flailing around with this sword say, at these things that are attacking Gary. <laughs> are, you, are you going to attack the main Batman, Gary Spike, or like the little ones following in? Because there's like four of them coming into the room, and no one's done anything about them yet. I, I feel like it's better to tackle the the easy panels first. So I'm going to go for the <laughs> <laughs> the minions, and then I'll <laughs> then you go for the splash, then you go for the splash page. Uh, yeah. Right. What you do is you roll your dice. Uh, roll your strength okay. because that's your it's involves hitting things a strength and you yep. can uh, also add a dice to that away. because you're you've got an advantage because your sword is awesome so you roll those so you're rolling four dice okay this is the point where i tell everyone by the way my dice luck is mostly terrible <laughs> it's actually not bad um okay i got do you want the total number or what each dice Num is number tell me if, every tell me how many four pluses you have Oh, of course, it's four pluses, isn't it? So two four pluses, and one of them Boom. is a six. Oh, that's nice. Uh, that be that that six would allow you to activate a special, but these guys are too weak to matter about that. You absolutely, okay. you hammer. I was going to say, you know, you said you're flailing get round. It's not like that at all. You are moving like you've done. You just know this. You know, like those ten thousand hours of practice. You feel like you've had a hundred thousand hours of practice. You feel like you're world class. You you beat up world class fences. You know, you can beat you beat fences right. with your finger. You are very good. Um, and you slash. You do slash one slash right. Both of them drop to the floor, slicing in um, and just ink everywhere. Ink so dark. Just uh, as, and as, as that happens, she like stops and like looks up at. Uh, uh, Brick and Olivia, and, and literally her face just kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, I would like to point out what I a know, perfect metaphor cool. this is. This is this is this is such a perfect metaphor for Dominance Comics, where the 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 best and strongest uh, weapon in their arsenal is uh, relegated to third class status, uh, <laughs> and could be saving their lives and their company and their industry on a daily basis, but they don't even appreciate it, or recognize what they have. They think it's a handle and not a sword. P P Palomino, Palomino, you opted to not Palomino help me. By Batman. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, uh, you know. Right. Okay. I don't know what you did to Batman. Why is Batman so mad at you? I was like, we could go. Why uh, have you disappointed him? Okay. Br Palomino is basically giving you a very judgmental monologue. <laughs> uh, um, well, yeah. I'm sort of composing my, my, I'm composing my lead out loud. Uh, I'm just kind of idly. That's good. Oh, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. Sometimes I, I write out loud. I don't recognize it. <laughs> Brick, you're towards the back of the room. There's two dice floating in the center, a D10 and D12. Uh, well, Gary fights Batman. Uh, actually, do you want to go first, Livia? Is that a... Yes. Okay, um, go. So... Jump in, Livia. I think, yeah. Livia, what are you doing? I grab my dice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. I've run this game before. Uh, occasionally, players are incredibly reluctant to grab the dice, which I'm quite fond of. I grabbed it earlier and nothing happened. So... No, no, you you grab the D twelve and it, boom! What's the? Uh, it hits you like an. Uh, what when? Well, oh, sorry, the best idea you had ever had was obviously uh, Femrev. Uh, so it's like remember that moment when you first fought up Femrev? T uh, it's exactly like that. Suddenly you feel like you're in touch with a bigger intelligence than yourself. Describe what you're talking about. I she-hulk pretty much. <laughs> I'm just like green. But I'm gigantic. I'm super muscly. I got sick armor, and I got a gigantic hammer that takes two hands. 
Nah. Oh, the all it, 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 Gary's psychosexual topography is like being crumpled up and, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, reimagined <laughs> before our very also, eyes. We can picture up this image of Gary wearing a slightly ludicrous outfit and these two Amazonian women <laughs> who are about to destroy <laughs> stuff in here. <laughs> it's, I'm not going to lie, it feels good. Livia, you going to do anything? Uh, you've I'm going to hit Batman in the teeth with my hammer. That seems literally like a good thing. You step in and uh, do it. Uh, roll your dice. You, your strength is... My strength is two. That's great. So roll two. Uh, and you only two dice. I got a six and a four. That sounds great. You bet it, like, you hit... Oh, six is good, That because you... Does six do something special for you, doesn't it? Your hammer. Yes. It does. Uh, it'll hit wounds. It does two against a metal armor opponent. Heavy protection prevents two. Okay. So... Yeah. Oh, it's, I suppose Batman's wearing quite heavy armor, I guess. He's, I think he's modern Batman rather than classic Batman. So you hit Batman hard in the chest, and he goes flying backwards against the wall. I'm oh, sorry, his face, I said. Sorry, I mis misunderstood. Batman goes reeling backwards. His fa it's, a, it's a crack, like an ex one of those experimental panels, like someone's broken the grid, and it feels like that. <laughs> Hits against the wall, messily. Uh, this moment, two of them, since you've laid in, two of the, the two remaining small bat people go at you. Um, as in, they jump at Livia, angry that you've hurt, you've hurt the, the boss man. Like these tiny spin off Batman's coming for you. Uh, your armor is one or two, two, isn't it? So your defense is two. Yes. yes Boom. Like, they're coming at you, but you've uh, subtract one from your guard. Okay. That yeah, means, like, you're on the back foot, you're being pushed across the wall. Gary is uh, looking as you go past. Br uh, Brick. I'm uh, guessing a seven... we can't interrupt that. No, no. We're basically... We're, I'm doing a rough combat round sequence here. So it's like, we're going to get to Brick. And, like, we're normally, like, doing a sort of order. In this particular case, is I'm sort of going around the room as you get introduced. Uh, Livia's on the back foot from attacking Batman. Gary, you've got time to breathe because Batman's being knocked off you. Brick, uh, two seven-foot warrior women are just drawing everything nearby. It's all chaos. Uh, a D10 is floating in the room. I grab the D10. You move forward, confident. You touch it. It hits you. What, what do you do? Um, describe your transformation. I Suddenly, I am the same exact height as I am in normal life, but I have hair growing out of my head that is made of liquid metal and i'm wearing a three-piece power suit which is also made of some form of liquid metal including a tie and in my in my coat pocket i have a pen and i pull out the pen and i click it and it becomes a power sword except absolutely like that you've got the full-on terminator 2 liquid metal but you click it and a little voice in your head saying uh i'm sorry sir you require energy uh, to fully activate the sword <laughs> And you have a moment of horror, then your eyes pan across the room. You know, basically you have the kind of Terminator, not Terminator, uh, Robocop moment. Like yeah. stuff goes across your vision. Realizing, yeah. And it picks up, there's a, in one of the things which um, Kyla killed, in the middle, there was a pulsing light. And you realize there's two coins down there. Oh. Well, you know how I feel about two coins to rub together. Yeah, you do, how, <laughs> how to phrase this? Um, Describe the feeling you had when you realized that Livia was going to fall for your contract. I felt like this sort of, we're going to succeed together. I mean, more me than her, but she will be paving the way. And I, you know, I see these guys coming at her and I just think I have to protect my, my, I mean, my, 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 my character, my, my contracted writer. Um, so I rush for that gold. And, and bricks, and bricks are great, guys. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you feel exactly the same way about that goal. You can make a work, you can make a brilliant yeah. partnership. This, this yeah. goal is going to turn this pen into something more than just taking notes with. You slam it. <laughs> Palomino? <laughs> as more potent IP, such as Batman, breaks down the door of dominance comics, <laughs> you see the same old players in new clothes, in new guises, but underneath. It's the same Brick Chadman, <laughs> and thus the same dominant. I'm sorry, I was just wor I'm workshop. I'm just playing around and looking. At yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Brick. You have no idea where the instinct comes from, but you take the coins. Uh, you take one coin and actually insert it into a slot in the back of your neck, as if you're an arcade machine. <laughs> oh, great. 
and it hits you. Every time of... I'm also wearing mirrored glasses. Yeah, mirrored glasses burning with rage. You literally, it's like an orgasm has exploded from your body in every direction. Money yeah. has always felt good, but not this good. Your sword bursts into light. Uh, like, basically, if a lightsaber saw it, they'd probably end up sort of getting a penis envy. That kind of vibe. <laughs> exactly yeah. that. All right. Fact, right, there is a... Uh, you see um, the two that are coming at Livia. You could probably get attack them if you like. I I will I will attack them because I need to I need to make sure she hits her deadline next week. Yeah, I would say uh, Neo. I, th- I believe with your laser sword you get to roll dexterity instead of strength oh. if you like. I think that's a special dexterity. ability you get. Yes. Uh, so I roll I roll the d10. Your free dice and oh. and the d10 because you're using your laser sword. At this point, readers. Everyone at home, we can go to the roll for your party thing. Oh, can you do let that me, for me? How do I do you want, that? Let me just add a dice for you. Okay. That's the wrong, that's the D12. It's the D10. Right. Move this away. Let's say you, you have a uh, dexterity of three and that. So select, the, select those dice. Oh, okay, I'll do that. And then I'm just going to roll, roll selected. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Hey! I got fours. Two fours and a two. If you rolled a worth note, if you rolled a one or a ten on the dice, it would have probably been bad. But two okay. fours is exciting. So that's two successes. Okay. That's enough to one of the uh, you shoot you uh, ram one of the uh, Batman right in the back, and oh. it, collapses, the it collapses. You know these miniature Batmen. You ram in the back, and he collapses <laughs> in the other one's arms, and the other one screams to the heavens as if it's a Robin dying in some uh, ba- famous DC pan- comic I've never read. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's a metaphor with the backstabbing, but... Yeah, there's a lot going on. Big Batman, and we go... Oh, shit, everyone's done something, haven't they? We go back to Gary at this moment. Gary, Batman is pulling off the wall, looking you mean in the eye. It ends here, Gary. You'll never write me. You'll never master me. Uh, what Sorry, you you're, you're breaking up there. I'm going to need you to redo that. Sorry, let me do it again. Gary, you'll never beat me. You'll never master me. I have been defeated so many like you before. Uh, what do you do? Whew. Um, uh, I agree with him. I, I I feel like uh, I, I, I put forth the, the idea that you are correct, and uh, how can I be one of your Batman? I don't necessarily <laughs> believe it. That maybe, maybe Gary came to Dominance Comics looking for a different kind of dominance. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling him this, but I don't necessarily believe it. I just want to see if that can calm this Batman down in this situation, because I don't know what he wants. I think he, like... It, is that moment. I'll tell you what, roll charisma and include your fool's dice because this is a very foolish plan. Okay. <laughs> and I know badly, because in a very your charisma is two. Two. So shall I set up your roll for your party? Oh, my charisma is three. Oh, Ooh. especially in those tassels, I think they add to your charisma. Yeah. Have you got so I'm gonna roll the three dice here for okay. you, and you can roll your dice in real life because it's the one with the symbol on. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So you got two, three successes, and what's your what's your special dice? Oh, let me uh, show that. Oh wow! I wish I'd shared that. That would be amazing watching. Sorry, I, I rolled a, I rolled a five, but it's not the one where I put the circle on. Fantastic. That's okay. That's four successes. So wow. that's actually incredibly good. Uh, and the way the four works, you add another symbol to your dice now. And uh, so in other words, it gets more. Every time it doesn't turn off, it gets more likely to happen. Does that make sense? Oh, so I do another circle on another side yeah. of it? All right. Cool. So it just like eventually it'll happen, and then other stuff starts happening. All right. Okay, Batman literally pauses for a second. You truly want to be a bat. You, you truly would wish to join the bat. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, man. Stay with me. I will kill your friends, and you can join me. And he turns and marches. Who's nearest? I reckon Brick's nearest at this moment. What? Sorry, as soon as he turns, I stab him in the back. <laughs> Sorry, that's the plan. Okay. <laughs> Marvelous. Uh, roll the dice again. Okay, I'll roll your dice pool again. Uh, right. Again, any- we're only Dominance Comics to listen to the fans instead of their own half baked ideas. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just. I'm, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Where are you um... are <laughs> Gary, uh, as I say, yeah. you've got what weapon have you got, by the way? Is it a rapier? I have a uh, just one second. I I have oh what did I I I, I did mark it down. Sorry, sorry. I, this is my first time. No, no, it's okay. Where did I, where did I mark it down? It's on I, the front of your. It's the to be on the sheet with the picture on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have a uh, of uh, concealed throwing weapons and martial arts. Great. Uh, Marshall, I literally forgot. Oh, it's not really good for stabbing in the back, but I think my little, my one of my knives. Oh, well, you can use, but you can use dexterity instead of strength, which means you roll four dice, so three dice for your fighting, and an extra dice because you're literally stabbing Batman in the back. Great. And you, and you also roll your dice. So I'm going to roll right, for you. Go for so it. Yeah. And well, that, that carried on moving. Oh. Oh. Did Did you what? try to roll as well, Gary? Did I? I didn't roll anything. All right. Well, you've got. Tell me. Roll your special dice and see what the next one says. Sure. Six. Wow. Uh, is that is that a symbol as well? No. Ah, uh, cool. Right. So that's two successes, which is enough to you stab Batman in the back. Oh. <laughs> it, you you uh, you like martial art blow in the small mm -hmm. of his back. He says, you know, there was um, you put, he sort of looks at you in the eyes. Says, there were. Was the three, there were seven movable attacks on that position. Three, uh, you know, three killed. Three uh, didn't he's, with he's, minimum he's harm. Talking too, he's talking too much, as Batman. Yeah, one, uh, one hurts. That that was one of the killing ones. He says as he stumbles backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Smash. Great. Uh, Batman is stumbling backwards, smashing out the window through a bat-shaped hole, uh, <laughs> and plumbling to the ground, uh, pumbling out the window. Palomino, okay. the remaining bat person, uh, drop the, um, uh, drops his bat robin friend, looks at you, those red eyes. You have a moment to do to any of your powers, if you like. Uh, let's see. You know, I, I uh, like the idea of, I had said that I have a dagger and a ranged weapon, but I like the idea of them being kind of giveaway con freebies and not actually useful, but that, that my actual uh, ability is the magical death touch. So oh, if I yeah, can call yeah. an audible on that and, and sort of uh, go to magical death touch. Cool, uh, cool. Uh, I guess Robin, let's... Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, this is an industry for adults. It doesn't need children. Children don't read comics and don't want comics. Let's stop pretending uh, 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 that, that, that they're a, a going viable economic concern. Besides, any child's just getting the money from their parents because we don't let children work yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have to roll your, dex uh, roll your dexterity. And include the D4, because basically, um, no, no, yeah, yeah, roll the dexterity and also include a D4. All right, so then that's that's two D6s and a D4, yeah? Yes, I'll explain. Basically, you get to use your D4 in a slightly different way. All right. So tell me how many four plus did you have, a set without the D4. Oh, geez, uh, I have a, a three and two twos. Uh, uh, the four has a two, and then, uh, yeah, right. the, D6s are three, the D6s are three and two. Okay, the way the actual D D4 works in this situation is... That you can put the default as a hat on top of a dice and increase its number. So, in other words, you can increase one of those to a success. I'll make that a five fine. then. <laughs> okay, get three or five. The way that works in the game is you're basically using your because you're basically in charge of fear. That's your that's your emotion, right? Mm -hmm. So they, you may like if you want to describe slightly how they're afraid of you. Like, you know, sorry, let me to do it. They're afraid of you. Literally, yeah, you telling that there's no there's no point of children in this industry as you your hand bursts through their body and they drop to mm -hmm. the floor. Uh, Everything's silent. The wind is blowing through uh, the window uh, in different directions to the two way the two cloaks are going. Everyone has a chance to breathe. <laughs> Ga uh, is Gary still on the floor? No, he's up, isn't he now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I would say, let's do this. Gary probably, like, I would imagine someone's near enough the window to look through, or at least followed through to, like, the Batman. And you saw that he's gone, uh, Batman's gone. But you look up and you realize something. This is San Diego. But it, this weird, it's, it's a weird ghostly San Diego, and that's obviously one thing. That's strange. The fact you're all there, that's another strange thing. But the strangest <laughs> thing of all is that all the advertisement is, that, is actually advertising FemRev. You have the, the nameless lead character on the side of every sky, skyscraper, an original Kyla artwork uh, there. Uh, wow. the, more importantly, 
the streets are full of fans, absolutely full of fans, all wearing merchandise, all staring around aimlessly. And they sort of hear the low rumble as they say it once, Femrev, Femrev, Femrev. As you kind of look, there's a, there's a level of hunger and need, which perhaps is more, you know, John Romero than Comic-Con. Uh, the streets are literally packed with these people. It's like, it's, it's a wall of people stretching out. And you find yourself remembering that thing that, um, the, the thing that Arthur said, talking about, we need to get to Hall H. And there we're going to have our 10 minute break. Uh, wow. So like, so yeah, this is exciting. Having seemingly defeated Batman, uh, marketing <laughs> goal at one yeah. point, <laughs> impossible to even consider dominance industries find themselves unable to decide what to do next <laughs> hesitant and slow to react weak of bladder and stomach and spine <laughs> that sounds good i'm gonna go phone that in but, uh, and we cut back from the ad break uh we have our brave heroes standing looking over the churning crowds in this awful dull and dreary san diego which is more so than the real one even because uh, at least that's normally sunny. Uh, this the sun is above you is like you sort of realize the sun is so uh, white it's actually the moon. It's the level of the, the, the awful Batman radiance to it all. Uh, and the, there's a bat. You think it's a bat symbol on the on the moon for a second, but you realize it's actually uh, the Dominance Comics logo. <laughs> <laughs> Dominance comics. <laughs> That's really inspired branding and marketing. I'm, I'm surprised and delighted to see this level of outside the box thinking from Dominance. This is I've, the first I've innovation I've you, seen in a long time. I've told you we've had we have big things coming up. I just couldn't, you know, you got to keep some things to your chest. Okay, yeah, I'm going to genuine question: Is this is are we in a marketing campaign right now? What is going on? Brick, as a call asked, are we in a marketing campaign? What is oh, going she on? asked me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, no, but <laughs> definitely I'm taking notes with my non sword pen. <laughs> yes. I'm about to say I, the, think um, this is, I think this is really happening, Kayla. I think we need to get to Hall H and see what's happening. Okay, I'm going to go around the group and actually ask you, like, internally, what what's your character really feeling right now in terms of what they're thinking? Starting with Kyla, uh, what what's Kyla thinking and feeling? So, Kyla's a, a, a she's got a dichotomy going on at the moment. One part of her is terrified and is like doesn't know what's going on, and that's kind of scary. The other part of her just wielded a giant freaking sword and <laughs> obliterated two things, and there's this small part of her that she never knew how much she wanted to do that and now she has she's just like yeah this is terrible right yeah we shouldn't be here right but secretly she's kind of loving it <laughs> amazing uh livia oh goodness i think she's horrified because this movie exists and there was no creative input and so it's just so far out of her hands that she's horrified by what it's become and it seems <laughs> emblematic more than anything else of how wrong the world has gone. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. Uh, uh, Palomino, what's your, what, what are your feeling? You know, again, as a journalist, I feel nothing. But as an observer, <laughs> impartially, what I'm seeing is what was maybe what was once a, a story of a, you know, we love stories of bloated failures. You know, we love the Titanic because it was unsinkable and yet sank. But we also love the story of scrappy underdogs. And I wonder if the assembled group here is beginning to maybe understand what they're capable of. I wonder if, if Livia, Livia looks outside and sees the entirety of San Diego decorated with these things that sprung from her mind. If Kyla understands that, that, you know, flawed art and all, as Gary would say, there's still 80 stories tall. Her character's everywhere. Even Brick, who was so inspired by rubbing two coins together that he managed to... To, to be a part of everything. Is it possible that this scrappy group of underdogs are starting to understand the, the mythopoetic resonance that they're connecting into and what it means to not just fans like Gary, but also fans unlike Gary? 
<laughs> I don't know. The, the the narrative is that the, you know you're not supposed to go into a story with your with your lead decided. But I'm I'm recognizing that maybe I had some preconceptions of the way this is going to go. And uh, dominance comments uh, they might be I might I might be surprised. What's brick thinking? I'm definitely I'm taking find more coins. On, on, yeah, I have two, I have three thoughts. Number A. I am looking at those posters and thinking, I knew we could do this. Inside, I always knew we had this in us. Look at those fans. They're practically like zombies. That's exactly what we want. Oh, and then yeah. on the other hand, I'm looking around the room and wondering if any of these other Batman things that have been shredded up have any more gold in them. And then third, I'm thinking, I need to hire a bunch of cheap people who can churn out more comics about this stuff. Um, Gary, what are you feeling? Oh, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I mean, I I, I killed I killed a Batman. Palomino and Livia are looking just smoking hot in these outfits, and uh, and I I just want to impress Brick. I is I, I'm like uh, Ant Man joining the Avengers. I feel I feel pretty good. Yeah. I am I impressed with Gary's performance thus far. Yeah. Thank you, Brick. Definitely, you are. You know in the ball game for being able to pitch me an idea later. Yeah. Both, it's worth noting both Gary and Brick backstabbed somebody in that fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just as a, a kind of like collective tissue, <laughs> thematic tissue happening. There. I learned from the best. <laughs> Brick is the best. Right. This is this moment of like you're breathing thing, what in hell? And you, you sort of collect your thoughts. And then there's this burst of energy is that the dice that is actually, you suddenly realize embedded in your own flesh pulses brightly and you feel new powers enter your body which we may have discussed in the break uh brick you have a little voice in your ai says um suggest you uh suggestion you boot your intern software to assist you in navigating this uh, dangerous situation ah, i push a button and and i'll and uh an intern like a sort of metallic pet sort of intern the little psychophantic guy named donk because that's the sound it makes when he puts my coffee cup on my table uh, appears and he says, oh, "What? What? What do you need? 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 What do you need?" He sounds a bit yeah. like Biddy from, like, yeah. uh, you know, for me, Buck Rogers. That that yeah. kind of like, "What do you need? What do you need?" He actually also yeah. takes the coin, the second coin, and eats it to actually activate himself fully. Oh, yeah. I didn't know I was going to have to pay him, but I'm okay with it. Only once, sir. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> does he? Does he look like me a little bit? He's a smaller, more hunched over, misery version of you. Right. But like, no with his hands he always out, like he's here to bring you something. Yeah, yeah he has less yeah, yeah. Would you read my oh, script? Are there any, <laughs> Would you are read there my any more coins I anywhere? Think... And can Kyla feed one to Donk? Because she's just like. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, actually the. Um, it's, it spoils out. It's basically he prints out like a dot matrix printer out of his mouth, the script. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. You'd be surprised. <laughs> that's actually a good question. You are, the fact it's been so chaotic, you have been nice. But yeah, there's, a, there's another piece of gold in the corner. Oh, there is a piece of gold in the corner. Well, I will grab that. And... I was about to say, we'll pick that for a second. Let's Brink and Kyla stop fighting over the coin. You both rush over, <laughs> and uh, Kyla, are you going to stop Brick from picking up the coin? Well, she's she's going to like reach for it because all she wants to do is feed it to Donk. She doesn't want it. She's just like, I want to feed the cute robot. And, and she's going to, like, lean for the coin, but when she sees Brick leaning for it, I mean, it's Brick Chadman, you know, so she's going to be like, oh, I mean, it's your robot, I guess it's I guess it's your robot. But she hopes he might realise that she really wants to feed the robot. Don't overpay the interns. So I, I, take, I take it, because he, he only needs to be paid once per year. Uh, there was a weird <laughs> that, when you saw Coyle sort of figure out going for the coin, there was a weird flush of panic, as in, how dare she? That was yours. Yeah, yeah, and it, exactly it, it, awesome. it comes, it's weird. It comes from nowhere, but it's very natural. But like, it definitely came on strong. Yeah, um, yeah. I moved for it quick when I saw her going for it. Donk, meanwhile, She's like, this, okay, okay. Drop, <laughs> this whilst this drama going on, Donk is leaning back, saying, uh, "We have Donk has brought you um, holographic map of the area." Oh, perfect. Oh. <gasps> 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 If Petco IP Park. can be said to have a mecca, San Diego Comic Con has proven that place. And as legions of the faithful drift towards Hall H year in and year out to receive 
uh, uh, inspiration uh, for their dreams from various IP concerns. So too does Dominance Comics. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'll fix it and write up. I'll punch up. I'm, I'll, fi I'll fix it. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like pause, looking. Petco at Park's also on there. Yeah, nice. Maybe there's like, I just like the uh, sorry, the relevant. Uh, I'm just moving around. The uh, relevant thing is there's a big flashing mark towards the bop end of San Diego Convention Center, saying that's basically where Hall H is for those who don't know. And you are up yeah. here, near the Seaport Village. Oh, oh, we're at the Hyatt. Yes. Yeah. Uh -oh. So, and all the streets are full of zombies, uh, zombie fans, admittedly, and your fans more so. <laughs> But still, zombie creatures driven by only one need, the need for what was in your brains. Um, <laughs> right. I'm going to head off. So, you're, you, you appear to be stuck with a problem. What are you going to do? That's no problem for me because I am a fan. It's like I'm Walking Dead when they're in. covered with rotting meat to get away from the zombies. Yeah, just exactly. <laughs> exactly. If there's all that merch, there are places to buy that merch. I can, can I can I, easily be one of those fans. Could I? Could I attempt to? Uh, let's. I'm assuming we're now just kind of we've I gotten like, out of the, yeah. the hotel and are kind of. <laughs> no, no, I'm, le I'm leaving you in the room. I, you have not gone, for example, through the Hyatt Bar yet. So who knows what is possibly what horrors are waiting down there? Uh, but. Um, <laughs> But the, the I, current situation, you are in the room and working out how you might get to Wall H from here. I, I think, let me just say, as the publisher, there are secret routes that I know through the hotel that avoid to avoid the fans. I mean, the, the readers um, and uh, are, you know, the people who make it all possible for us. Um, I, w I would suggest we we hit one of the back elevators and go down and take the back walk around uh, where, as opposed to the front, where where all the security will be keeping the zombies, so we can try and rush around the back of the convention center if possible. <laughs> that would be a huge me, honor for me. To be like, why did we not know these elevators existed? I can I can get you past the uh, metal thing, Gary, the metal gate. Okay, is this is this the plan? You're going to try to head down and head. Uh, like, That's my back. suggestion. It's up to them if they want. No, no, I, I, I'm just saying this is a very open like. I don't know, this yeah, stage I... of the adventure is very much. You have a problem of how to get across San Diego, which is the problem yeah. we've all faced. Uh, but <laughs> so... in in Kyla's um, in Kyla's internal mind, all she she's thinking like, where the hell is Arthur? We should go to Hall H. But she's imagining it said in her normal little like guys. Guys, we, sh we should probably go to Hall H. What actually happens is like this mighty warrior holds a sword and points it in the direction roughly on the compass of Hall H. And he's like, to Hall H we should go. And then she's like, what? what just came out of my mouth? <laughs> yeah, we should go to Hall H. That seems legit. <laughs> yeah, I concur. That's uh... right. To Hall H we go. So we rush, we rush out into the halls. I say, like I say, go down the elevators because you're basically going down the back way and entering at the rear. Is that what you're kind of saying? Like, yeah, you know where the restaurants are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 the they, but then too, though, there's also the, there are the the actual transit tunnels in and out of the like there are the secret like movie yeah. star tunnels like yeah, yeah, that's a, what I mean. The, 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 the catacombs, of, yeah, yeah, the catacombs. We'll go, we'll go past those restaurants. We, we never actually need to be outside. What if yeah. there are zombies in the catacombs, catacombs, and we get stuck in closed-in tunnels with zombies? At long last, <laughs> uh, <the> Dominance <laughs> Comics must face their mm, the, the consumers of their IP, rabid for more, uh, uh, eager for new, <laughs> relentless in their appetites. You find I, I don't want to hurt these guys. Yeah, you're about to actually head down. You head down at the elevator and it opens. And what you find, what should be leading into one of the tunnels is there's a barricaded door. You can see it's been clearly been barricaded from the other side and there's fans lurching against it, uh, mumbling, uh, fem rev, fem rev, fem rev. And one of them is holding quite proudly aloft a bone of somebody uh, oh. uh, and gnawing at it slightly. Can I um, sign the bone? Are you going to get close enough? You realise really uh, when you get close before you say it, before you say it, be careful. Be sure you're actually saying that, Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> I will totally murder you. 
Uh, the other thing you realise, uh, they pulled someone out, as said this bone, they pulled someone out, and you realise there's a corpse with the um, uh, lanyard around, and the lanyard, uh, you can sort of see the photo from, from the with Brick's incredible net new vision. You see it's one of the actors who was playing in the, one of the TV shows, uh, oh. who'd been uh, torn apart by the crowd in a perfume-esque piece of uh, need. Oh. Uh, so like the, the one thing there was a blockage of like zombie fans between you and the t- tunnels but like there's only like a mob of them you know it's not it's far less than the right outside I honestly would like to join in in tearing that person apart because of how they were miscast <laughs> <laughs> I think this goes, I think this goes has, well <laughs> back okay. number one has tipped his hand yet again yeah no I would say Gary's Gary you're rushing forward I, I'm I'm rushing forward, very similar to my experience with Batman. I feel like I'm uh, I'm a no, part no, no, of no, it. Yeah. Once again, do charisma, include the full dice. All right. <laughs> Sorry, that's yeah, free. You're, you're rolling for me. Yeah, yeah. Let me just give you. I'm the rolling three. this one. And I I've, I rolled a one. Well, that's still a add a circle to your dice, but you still got two successes. Oh, add a circle to another circle? Yeah, yeah. You carry on oh. until you roll one of those circles. Oh, but with two right. successes, that's plenty enough. Um, you okay. you managed to get in and start getting involved, and one of the fans turns to you, like, and, and then amazing Gary cosplay. Oh, they know me. Super fan Gary. That's, that's a, a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Oh, that's, that's, really, that's really kind. And then I, I, I counter yeah. by saying... You are, this you are is... the dream. You know, Gary was the dream. Gary got to write the scripture too. I, I counter by saying this is very similar to what happened in issue 27. You know what I mean. And, and I'm assuming their eyes light up. Yes, they nod. They nod, they nod wisely. What happened in issue 27, Gary? Well, in issue 27, um, the, the uh, uh, FemRev... Um, uh, 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 accepted, uh, accepted uh, the uh, the um, the 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 uh, Ruth Rev as 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 being part of the modern era and and, and teamed up. Excellent. So you went really amazingly daft punky in the middle. Uh, well, okay, good. Yeah. Um, Okay, that's what you wrote. Uh, Livia, what did you want to write in that episode? Oh, God. <laughs> Makeup and destruction. <laughs> um, goodness. I'm sorry, my brain is working. Oh, no, no, it's all right. But it's like, you didn't, okay, maybe the answer is you didn't want to write that episode and it was a rush. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Or, or, or does Mayhem and Destruction inspire the zombies? I don't know what you actually said. Oh, right. Yeah, we Gary, didn't hear it cut out yeah, in sorry. the word. Oh, sorry. What, what I cut out was the the, the issue was um, when uh, when Femrev met uh, Golden Age Femrev and uh, and then and then teamed up with her after after um, um, holding kind of a, a mentorship distance from her. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, it wound up being a way for marketing uh, to you know sort of cross promote the fact that they had a hardcover of previous editions of Femrev coming out, and so it felt very forced. Um, especially the whole idea is the fact that there is no structure on which Femrev, the Femrev main character, can rely. Um, so she's forced to take matters into her own hands, which is a criticism of the social inequalities and failures that uh, leave our most vulnerable um, populations to have to fend for themselves in cases of injustice. Mm-hmm. And I was very dissatisfied with how that issue. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I thought it was really cool. <laughs> uh, it's awful. I said the weird thing, uh, like a lot of toys. Libby, so, you have something like in the mix of uh, the actual fans. You see some people wearing actual fan art. Uh, they're cosplaying as characters from the story the way you want it to be. In the mix, <gasps> oh, does that mean different? Does that mean different? Does that mean different, d- does that mean different <laughs> from the way they were published? Yes. Uh oh. Wow. As well. Wow. A, this, this you also see you also see cosplay based around the way that it was published as well. Like it's like an, almost a multiverse of fandom is in front of you. Might be a good way of putting it. Oh. Again, dominance shows they have a treasure trove of IP, but no idea what to do with it or that it even exists sometimes. <laughs> I'm I'm I... immediately noticing that some of this is unauthorized uh, cosplay <laughs> that is 
probably in violation of copyright and is not. Uh, can can I donk, don't can donk they... print outs can donk print out cease and desist notices? Yes. Yeah. Donk, donk, cease and desist <laughs> right now. Kayla, Kayla has just spotted one of the, the zombies wearing a t shirt with a design that she drew for an AU side comic that she and Livia did under pseudonyms on the internet. And, and she's just like grabbing Liv's arm, like, we can't hurt them. They're so wonderful. You should, wait, what did this AU, I've got to ask, what did this AU include? And to be honest, my subtext is, was it like, is it a sexy AU? Is this the... <laughs> yeah, it had a little, uh, maybe a little more sex than the, than the normal comic, but also it was a very emotionally in touch scene that was counter to what we were writing in the main comic at the time. And um, it only means so much to us. And there it is on a t-shirt. How can we, how do we attack these guys? <laughs> I'd say, Brick, uh, Brick, Donk actually says, uh, Donk, and, uh, dish, God, Donk has not got resources to distribute sufficient cease and desist orders without further uh, funds required, sir. <laughs> So I tell, him, I tell him to kill anybody wearing unauthorized clothes. <laughs> okay. To actually yeah. step back for the mechanics element. Ah. Uh, the mechanics is, I'm saying, you can make the crowd disappear if you give him a gold. <laughs> wait, wait, what if, what if you promise him college credit? Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Trust me, he's not, asking, he's not asking for the money. He's asking for the money for the printing. So he's essentially... Oh, my pay printing. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, this is not for him. This is basically I still have that one coin that I you do. from ah. Kyla. All right, yeah. I give it. I, I, I give. I give Donk the coin to to provide the cease and desist to all the uh, non uh, official IP. Okay. What, what happens now is take a D10 and roll it. Uh, as in, if you go to screen, so let's just roll the D10, and if it's if it's even, uh, something goes wrong, and if it's odd, something works. How do I choose the D10? The D10, just like click it, and then like double click it. Is there a D10 up there? Yeah, that should be on the far left, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it. Can you put it up on the screen? Oh, that's a good idea, sorry. Yeah, why don't you just do it? I'm, I'm having trouble getting that thing to work when I click the... Oh, that's the D10, okay. Yeah, okay. Let me re-roll selected. All right. Nine! So it, it works perfectly. Well oh, done. Great. Um, boom. Immediately, uh, Donk, like, like stickers coming out, and he moves us to the crowd, and they go, and it, instantly it's like salt on a slug. Uh, they kind of go, hmm, and they start walking away sadly. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they all are clearing off into the distance, leaving the way to the underground clear. Oh, thank God. Accusations of financial malfeasance versus... <laughs> Inability to respond to what its fandom wants and needs yet again hobbles. I don't, I don't know. Can Kyla just like grab Palomino's arm while he's mid like <laughs> monologue and just be like, "Can we just move, yeah. move?" On I think I think he just kind of perpetually thinks out loud while moving. I don't. I don't think like like there's there's no off position on the genius switch. There's also not a volume. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you probably was kind of semi-lucky because they were looking at you increasingly hungrily, like they really liked your cosplay, <laughs> and they were starting to come around. But like at this point, Donk arrives, <laughs> everyone, and it's okay. Uh, is everyone going to go into the underground now? Or cool, yeah. You, yeah. you head down. It's dark down there. It's cold. It's empty except for the corpses of people who starved to death in there, waiting for the fans to disappear. You realise the various cast members have all barricaded themselves in here and couldn't find their way out. Um, it's all very, I mean, it's weird that, like, despite the, let's be honest, it's been pretty surreal so far. And it's the mixture between sometimes you can treat it very comically, but the kind of corpse is just lying there. Make sure you remember that, oh, yeah, yeah, humans, humans can die here. I, you know, like, no one's actually been hit yet, but maybe you're thinking about what would happen if I was actually hit here? Like, would it hurt? And that's very undeniable in here as you step off into the dark. Bricks uh, and dogs light. Uh, coming from their armor and their cybernetics burn into the darkness ahead of you as you make your way down. Like Dungeoneers, uh, you make your way for the da the undergrowth beneath the um, the enormous building. It's about a couple of miles walk, but feels further. It's like this kind of weird SDC Moria vibe. Uh, and you kind of like, there's moments you look to one side and you realize there's something burning down further, but you just carry on straight towards Hall H. And you come up in the back door uh, and you hear like baying from the other side. Femrev, Femrev, give us Femrev. 
Uh, do you want to open the door and see what's inside? Who's opening uh, the door? Gary, why don't you open the door and see what your other you fans... You literally is. have an intern. <laughs> a robot intern. I gave okay. you the last coin. Look, I, like, oh. I, turn to, I turn to Brick and I say, I will open this door, but I lean in and whisper to him, if you let me write the sequel to Femrev. Done. Great. Did we All right. That? Yeah. <gasps> it's, like a it's a handshake deal, Kayla. Don't worry. All right. Okay. Um, all right. I'll open the door. You open the door and you peek through, and you realize it's it's all about quiet enough. It's, just, it, it's not quiet. People are people's attention aren't on you. Uh, people's attention are on the stage where Arthur Davis, in that weird S and M editor look he had, uh, like if, if it's imagine the like. The kind of the dream vertigo editor that's kind of the look he's got <laughs> in this kind of like you know that's it's, everything's very 90s pbc it's very <laughs> impressive uh and we have this um uh and in front of it there, there is everyone in hall h are piled up there's a mob of them kyla there is a mob of these creatures and they're all baying for um uh arthur on the stage and he says yes and we will give you i will give you at last we will bring uh femrev to you and he gestures and in walks femrev this is a perfect uh, copy of her. And it's actually like, you know, you don't know who they got to cast, but it's immaculate. That kind of impossible mm. comic book le- uh, element to her. There's so much glamour. And the crowd are cheering. They're going wild. They're tearing each other apart and eating each other. And like, you know, tearing out their eyes because they'll never see anything so beautiful again. It's like this enormous like, moment. And then Femrev starts... Sh- sh- uh, shedding her skin and sloughing and bits that like it's made of ice and she's chunking apart and everyone um, and there's a moment of panic in Arthur's face and the crowd scream no and Arthur goes not again not again uh, and then the crowd start lurching towards him and he's throwing fireballs at them to try to keep them keep them away uh, what do you do? Uh, how are we feeling about Arthur this- right now guys? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, Let's go get Arthur. Yeah, I think we probably should, right? Okay, you're gonna rush and try to keep the crowd back uh, a bit. Can can Kayla, I was gonna say, um, I, okay? Can I can I um uh, how how widespread can I execute? Like, can I try to transfer an emotion to the crowd? I'll tell you what. That's what normally work. That's it's sort of you say that aloud, and then like suddenly there's a voice in Libya's head. Um, and it's a, it's a snake from Anaconda, and it goes. Mm. And it, it is. It is. Just, <laughs> oh my god! Wow! Better that, prop than the sword. There's a pop going on. Yes. And you, and it is just. And the thing is, it just sounds like a hiss. But is that real? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! She's been here the whole time. She's in my lap. <laughs> yeah. I say all pe- in, the- in real life, but she'll be Drusilla in the game. It's not an RPG session unless a pet immediately derails it. And this is definitely this is different from a cat at the very least. That is beautiful. Yeah. Um, wow. That hiss happens. But you can like the weird thing is you understand exactly what it's saying. It's like no human voice. No no human voice could actually speak to so many people. But the voice of the wild could. I could I could help your little friend speak to the crowd for a favour. All Would right, you- Thank you. Thank you. Livia gently, uh, so there's a gentle touch of a, like a snake kiss, a tiny lick on, on your neck. And there's a hug, of a, a constrictor hug that's almost too tight. And then there's a burst of power. Palomino, you feel like, you suddenly feel like you're full of enormous energy that you could speak and the world would hear. It's like you're ready to publish on the biggest platform known to man uh, and woman and humankind. Um, you can completely use your ability to all this crowd now. Uh, I want the I want to uh, still them with reverence. Oh, that's good for the people gathered before them. That's really good. Uh, so that's absolutely the way it works. What you do is you roll your dice pool and include the d4. So you roll three dice for your charisma and right. include your d4. All right. Now, if for for the sake of being recorded, would you prefer to do that so people can see what the role is, or should I do it here and record no, you, it? No, you do it as in it's like. Um, I've heard the players. It's always better for the players' role. Of the D I mean? of the D six, I have a six, a four, and a one, and of the D four, a two. Okay, the way actually dictators work is slightly different. The D four is the number of successes you have, so you have two successes, 
Mm. And the uh, success, the other successes of the normal dice, you can either increase or decrease that too. So in other words, you can either push it up to four or take it down to zero. Uh, four would not be fatal. Well, push it up to four then. As I was say, the way the actual scale works is there's an emotional scale. Once you get pulse four, you're in danger of people exploding, basically. Right. Uh, like, uh, but you're, you're capable of supernatural level of awe. Your voice yeah, speaks oh, and... Sorry, okay. Palomino? No, no, okay, I got you. No, no, as in basically that is enough... I would say, if you took a scale, three is as much as any human would ever feel. Four is enough. If, four, if it was fear, four would, is a chance of giving someone a heart attack or making them, you know. So like, maybe instead of like a silent reverence, it's more like uh, the, the the kids in the audience of the Ed Sullivan show when the Beatles performed. Yeah, yeah. And it's oh, just right. like ecstatic reverence. Oh, that is that moment. And literally, and uh, you do this and it hits and everyone goes, oh, it's the creators. They, they stay as one pointed to the stage and they kind of all to the floor and they do the whole we not, we're not worthy from Wayne's world. And this entire crowd of people <laughs> are basically bowing towards you and cheering as you enter the stage. Uh, and um, Does it happen much, to me too? Yeah, all of you. Yeah. yeah. No, like, like, I, yeah, I, you know, I, you're oh, no, 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 not you. No, no, okay. just no, no you're, you're super, you're, you're Gary. No, no, yeah, I think, I think Gary, Gary, man. You're the upcoming writer of FemRev, the yeah. FemRev 2. Thank you, Brett. Associate editor in one issue miniseries. Yeah. And Arthur <laughs> looks at you so gratefully. You know, uh, Arthur looks at you so gratefully in that kind of, um, that, that was just getting wild. I'm so sorry. That was, that was a mess. Thank God but, the power yeah. of the press was here and the millions of readers of Fangoria magazine to help <laughs> harness the energy and the power of the IP produced by Dominance International. What was it? Yeah. Dominance yeah, Industries? In, yeah. Whatever. Dominance industries. 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 Dominance yeah. Industries uh, Enterprises. Die. International yeah. Incorporated. We're a multi. Oh, that was good, Chip. Chip, that was good. Die. That was good. We're, we're right. a multi level uh, streaming platform. We're everything. We're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you okay? Has anyone been hurt? I mean, I, not so far, but what did you do, Arthur? Uh, it's a, I, just, I just wished it played out differently. And I, I was wishing, so, like, obviously, those, a kid's TV show, is that really what FemRev was? That's not what none of us wanted. You know, I remember, like, when me and Livia used to, like, you know, drink and talk about the plans for the book early on. And, like, I, I shared my ideas. I, admit, I probably shared them a bit strong and they were loud. But, like, honestly, we're all on the same page. We want to create something great. And that's, that's what we deserve. And I realized, and I was just drunk one night browsing and I found and I found this this game they made to me and said, like, you'll be able to go to a world where you can make it real. So I'm kind of God here, I think, but I'm not very good at it. Like, Arthur, and I, you're God over a very weird, warped world. FemRev is just a comic, dude. Like, yeah, I, I, I think if I mastered the, I, if I mastered these powers, I could make this world like our world, but with FemRev as a major franchise. Like, if I can control this, but I don't have, I think I need you to all, like, he's exposed, like, and there's a moment, and this is actually Livia get the whisper, uh, and it's Ripley talking to you this time. He's not telling me everything. Never trust a company man. <laughs> so that's Ellen, Ellen Ripley. What it is, is you can, uh, if you all stay here, the universe stabilizes. If you don't choose to, if, you know, you can either stay here or go home. You've all got to agree. Uh, that's how it works. And if you don't decide soon, this entire reality will fall apart. Uh, worth noting, and I'll put this in, dead people don't get to vote. Well, first of all, I think, I think you're secretly brick. <laughs> this sounds more like, like, like brick's world. It's like, I, I, just, I, don't, I, don't I have exciting... Fun. I think if we all stayed here and we used our abilities and tried to creatively flow it together, like, I can't, I can't make her, I can't make FemRev, but if Livia and Kyla were here to help me, I think I could make FemRev and then we can make this world. And it's, honestly, my life has been so, it's the only good thing I ever did in my life. And it's just, yeah. just led to nothing. Yeah. You know, I, have, so, I have exciting news, though, for, for Kyla and Livia. Fangoria.com is getting into the scripted IP game. And look at what you've been able to create here. Just imagine what you could create with a fair and equitable contract. It would be amazing what Livia and Kyla and, and Gary can create. You're right. 
It's worth knowing. <laughs> let, let, Brick have his fan, let, let Brick have his fans. Let's go build a new kingdom rather than rule in Brick and Arthur's. But guys, how do we know if anything we do here is going to affect anything in real life? It might mean nothing. No, 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 no. We stay here. We make this world a copy of the real world, which just has the show as being famous in it. But I where are so, our so friends? I, think it's I mean... <laughs> Well, how, big is my house how many more coins does Brick Chadman need to take out of your hand, Kyla? Don't don't speak to her like that. For one thing, that is a. I mean, like she needs a Brick man gave me my telling her telling her about her contract. Look, this, okay. First of all, this is the first time in my life where I've been in front of a crowd cheering for me. <laughs> <laughs> So my my inst my instinct my instinct is to stay, but this whole thing, I'm a I'm a super fan, but it's supposed to propel me to write Batman and Spider Man, and that doesn't mean anything here in this world. So I don't think I can stay. It's like how can we don't know what the God has said to Livia, right? Yeah. You know, Livia could choose to share that if you like. You can share that with the group. The other thing I'm going to share with the group is the fact that comics is the wrong industry for you if you have only one good idea. Ooh. There is wisdom to be found in the corridors of dominant <laughs> All the, international like, entertainment. Is your pitch vaguely at Palomone? Uh, sorry, is Palomone's pitch, is that also at uh, Arthur as well? Trying to say, I, say again, I'm, it's not even a pitch. I am ruminating out okay. loud and. <laughs> Just an outsider commenting on the industry. Okay, guys, here's a crazy thought, right? These, 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 uh, these guys—they're a bit scary. Sure, they've te they torn apart a part. They torn apart a few actors. They have killed a few people, but they—they they love what we do. Maybe we could genuinely kill with love. Maybe if we give them what they want, they'll be happy, and we can go home rather than. Like try to kill them? I don't know. What are we supposed to be doing here? Do we have to? <laughs> what do we do? Oh, it's like, I started like, to train of thought. There's one other thing. The uh, roof has just flown off, as if it's a sudden storm cloud, <laughs> and the sky is starting to crack. Oh. It's like <sighs> it's that element of like a certain apocalyptic vibe happening here, like tiny shards of panel falling around you. Uh, Arthur goes, please, we can stay. Um, we can definitely, st we can make great things here. There's a whisper in your ear, Livia. It's, uh, it's Anaconda. My favour. Kill him. <gasps> Wait. You don't know that. But if she kills you, then we can't go home ever. Also, didn't we don't specify know which him. That, no, 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 I say kill, sorry, kill Arthur. Oh. If, but... If no, Arthur's it, dead, are we allowed to go home, or just, or do we no, just no, go without? No, him? definitely. How to first? They don't get dead people. Do get to vote? Is the rule? Oh, so all in other words, so it's, you could settle. In other words, if you're actually disagreeing, you settle the argument by one side murdering the other. <laughs> is the the basic dynamic you are now facing? Livia, your your god Anaconda is demanding a blood sacrifice. Oh, uh, yeah, and this guy, how to phrase this? This guy clearly isn't going to say yes. What are you going to do? Oh no! Do we have a ticking clock on that snake gun? <laughs> I mean, can I get five minutes to try arguing, or is it like immediately done? It's like kind of like no, Marvel has the hall booked after this, and they are outside banging on the doors, ready for a, yeah. ready for trailers. So, <laughs> She's like Livia, it's the only way you're going to go home. I mean, yes, all good, all, all good writers need an editor, uh, but you need a better editor. <laughs> and, but he's really important to him. Make you agree to come home. Is there is there anything? What what would it take for you to change your mind? Okay. Uh, like, it's obviously, like, he's not going to be confused, and he's, like, he's a bit broken and lost now. Um, you're not going to start, like, I have to, I could, maybe I could kill you and make, resurrect your bodies or something like that. Maybe that would work. What about, what about a co-creator credit for the editor? Please. I know, I know this is a weird fantasy we're in, but I don't believe that fantasy would ever be, <laughs> ever be a credible solution. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Can I can I try to uh, 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 I would like to try and influence Arthur um, with just raw, the raw terror of the amount of work he would be taking on himself were he were he there. Amazing. 
Let's go. Already fast. overworked and underpaid. You don't have an intern, but Brick does. You should come with us. You couldn't handle it here. Okay. Um, roll that dice again. So basically, that's three. Yeah. yeah, three dice, including D4. Okay. Uh, the the D6 are a six, a three, and a two, and the D4 is a four. So you can either, you're on four. You can either take it up down to three or up to five. The thing about dictators is it's, it's very much like it's, it's an art, not a science. So you, you're kind of thinking, is it enough or isn't it enough? Gang, let me create a quick poll here. If Arthur's head explodes, how do we feel about that versus him coming back with us and we he might not do it anyway? I'm, I mean, I'm trying real hard to be uh, the best version of this character. I, I think uh, I can uh, him But I can also could compel him to for his like to go full scanners here, I think. You don't oh, know it has been an explode. Really wants to eat him. Yeah. I'm sorry, Marjorie? My BFF, the snake god, really wants to eat him. So your your option's probably better than a zero sum. Uh, it might not really be Arthur. Maybe this is a weird dream version of Arthur. So it's not really Arthur's head, right? Okay. Right, do you want to do it? Four, three, four, or five. Five. We'll split the difference. Why not? Last ten minutes of the game. Why wouldn't we do that? <laughs> and I know, and I know, and I'm sorry for not just going. Yeah. I'm, yeah. No, no. I love, I love the tension. This is great. Uh, you hit it with Arthur. Two things happen. Three things happen simultaneously. One, you feel it's it's a weird, awful thing. Like you know the level of like. Imagine if you have the power to if cancelling properly existed, like people say it does, and you do cancel some of the button press and gesture. You feel like you've just basically done that. There's elements of like that level of power. And, and the press two uh you have the but you immediately you see his eyes go well oh my god i'm i'm too lazy to be god can i oh so i'm too lazy to be god. I... That... What, what you want to kyla sorry sorry i'm sorry this is lag is because i'm talking over people is at this moment as palomino does what he's doing does arthur look scared Yes, but that's what he's trying. That's what Palomino is trying to do. But the whole point is that, like, sorry. Yes. Uh, if you, we, we can, I know you. I know what you're talking about in terms of emotion training. But like, let this sequence yeah. play out and see what happens. Uh, okay. Sorry to to reset the stage. For example, a you feel terrible. It really is a big fucking weighty thing in your chest that you've unleash. Two, uh, he looks petrified, utterly, and he sort of look at somebody who's just looked up and see the scars stretching on forever. There's something in his eyes like um. A Lovecraft hero at the end when they look up and have that cosmic moment of horror. He says, I, I can't be God. I'm, I'm too lazy to be God. And he r r holds on to you, weeping at Palamona in terms of, he looks, he's like desperately grasping at you. Please, you've got to save me. You've got to save me from this. Uh, there is kind of like also blood kind of running from his eyes. Uh, that, that, there's that level of fear going on. And is secondly, that new or is that where, is that, that's, I just assumed he was always like this. Yeah, he's a bit he's a dwarf, though. It's more than usual, you say. Yeah. And three, the most important thing is the fact you've used your ability on someone else means you've released control of the crowd. Uh, the crowd is now lurching forward, hungrily wanting to tear everyone apart. Let's go uh, home, guys. Okay, everyone's in a mess. You're kind of holding on to each other. Kylie, do you want to do anything before we do the traditional, do you want to go home? <laughs> I think Anybody probably not. Want to first? <laughs> no, I was about to say. What happens now is okay. Everyone grasps it, hold of each other, and the the ritual is basically to say, "I want, uh, I want the game. I want, sorry, I want the game to end." And I'll say, "I'll go in circle, starting with Arthur, ending with Kyla. Uh, I want the game to end. I think I want the game to end. I want the game to end. I want the game to end." Can I take notes from this back to the real world? <laughs> not a yeah. no. That's not a. That's not. I want the game to end. <laughs> All right. Then I want the game to end. No, too late. As long as you remember this. As long I want as the game to end. How powerful my IP is when I get back to my world. I, I'm fine with the game ending. The second Gary says, "I want the game to end." Shrug. You're all back to reality. You're all sitting, staring at your Zoom chat. Arthur is weeping, sobbing, sobbing awfully. Like he's clearly emotionally crushed. <laughs> Livia has. Uh, Livia crashes out to one side as if she's been choked. Uh, as in, like, literally her entire body has been crushed by an invisible snake. She can't breathe. She can't breathe. Uh, we actually go to the um, the sirens approaching. Oh. Someone, uh, someone calls the sirens to actually uh, get her. She's taken to hospital. She spends three months there as if uh, some kind of weird asphyxiation, as if an angry snake god had actually somehow actually cursed her on the way back. 
<laughs> However, what we're going to do now is the epilogue. You all made it back to reality. Congratulations. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to ask you, how do you, how does this experience change your life? Uh, I'm just start with Enzo. Describe how you take this experience and give give me a little epilogue scene for your character, and then I'll add a note to it. Starting with what do you, who wants to go first? Any volunteers? Livia. I mean, fuck this series. <laughs> it's not worth dying for. There's no piece of art that has ever existed or will ever exist that's worth a human life. And uh, again, if you only have one good idea, this is not the industry for you. So, to the, or sorry, Gary, if you would like to write it, by all means, I have other things to do. You know? Well, it's fun. Contracts and representation. It's funny you mention that because while we were uh, in that weird world, uh, when I was with the, the zombie fans, I was taking a lot of notes, uh, mental notes on all the various uh, AU t-shirts and, and fanzines and stuff that were around. Um, and I have essentially ripped them off and, uh, and uh, I've been publishing my, my, own, my own comic, um, not with Brick. I was like, great. I'm going to say two minutes. No, uh, Gary, uh, sorry, I'll do Livia first. Livia, as you're doing this and you're kind of starting a new career and working out new places to have ideas and uh, move, trying to find a way out above, how to phrase, find another way above B plus might be a way. You're watching Aliens one night and you get the scene where the uh, Ripley says, you don't see them fucking each over for a goddamn percentage. And then you must have been tired. Well, you, I mean, you, might, you don't remember being stoned. Her eyes turn to you uh, and she speaks, I'm proud of your decisions. And then she turns back and the film carries on. And you could have just been really tired. You could have been. But you can't be sure about that. Gary, uh, the weird thing happens to you is like um, every, um, on the anniversary of your, um, you, this event, as in November the 1st, every November the 1st, you get a mailbag full of like legal uh, cease and desists. And when you actually look up the cease and desists, they're to, they're to people who don't exist. But every year, this mailbag arrives of people somewhere else screaming that you've ripped them off. Uh, Kyla, do you want to go next? Yeah, OK. Um, I think the, the first and most tangible thing that Kyla took away from this experience is she has a tendency to speak to kitchen knives. Uh, she wonders <laughs> if they might reply to her. So kind of, so Kyla time, gets into she, knives. Like, cool, having, cool, cool. You know, every time she has dinner, she just very quickly goes, hello. And then they don't, they, they, they never reply. So that's kind of lingered. And she kind of wishes she was, she's going to start sword classes because she thinks that maybe what it showed her is that she could be really good with a sword. And she doesn't need to just draw a, a female comic revenge saga. She could just be female comic revenge saga. Um, but also... <laughs> She took from it, having seen T-shirts of people with fan art and AU and everything else, what she took from it mostly was what we make doesn't really matter. What matters is just how loved, <laughs> damn, I care about IP, damn it. Um, but how loved the, the property is. Um, but also she's a bit scared that fans might become zombies and try to kill her. Hmm. But beyond that, she's all about the love for the fact that like we all get to share in the love of what's created so her work takes a real turn up uh because you know she clearly cares about it but she, she just keeps talking to knives and it's weird and i would say the uh the talk to knives thing uh, the image i want to give is like a, you in a fencing competition or is it fencing or sword fighting <laughs> let's go <laughs> you no know, it's like literally that moment there's fencing competition and then this, this woman walks in who is startling uh and she's like seven foot tall and it's like and you said uh, the last image of you and her on the piece against each other and rush on guard and, and flashing in. And it's like, you have no idea what that meant, but that was a bit weird. I reckon Brick and then, Pal Brick and then Palomino. Brick? Well, my experience showed me that my instincts were completely right for, for how big Femrev could really be. And so I, I spend the next six to 12 months, you know, basically you know, pounding the pavement in LA, trying to convince that everybody that with the right actor in the role, actress in the role and with the right showrunner, you know, that this could really be the next Game of Thrones and, uh, or Xena or something. And that, that uh, 
you know, we just need to listen to to the real hardcore fans to uh, to see what they what they really want and just give it exactly to them. Guys like Gary, who you know, I can't get to return my phone call now for some reason, but uh, it really does, if anything renew my faith more and more with the IP that dominance owns and that we can dominate. That's great. The one thing is like, everything's like, and it works, you know, the, you're pounding the payments, you're getting genuine progress, it's going well. The only problem is like, you, you have recurring nightmares and, it, and it, it's always the same. It's always like a massive successful San Diego. It's all very beautiful. And then the door, the back of the door bursts in and it's FemRev who walks to the stage and slash your throat and that kind of i will finally get my revenge on men like you and then you wake up uh, covered in sweat uh palomino what do you do you actually, know, I say, i'll start with arthur actually i'll just say arthur happened arthur's like arthur has multiple nervous breakdowns and it's clearly he's left haunted forever and he every only the only kind of real concert you have is apologies in that kind of like i'm sorry i was an awful editor especially then <laughs> Palomino, what about you? you know, markets are, by definition, rational. And uh, uh, if the experience taught me anything, and it's my time really as head of the International Finance Desk of Angoria magazine, was that <laughs> the kind of, when it comes to the world, IP is driven by fans, right? The root of uh, fanatics, by definition, uh, which is passion and is blind and it is uh, 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 illogical. It is, it, is, it is impossible to predict. Uh, and it's incredibly powerful and incredibly potent. And who, uh, no one has the right to, when I, something trying to observe an irrational force as a rational uh, entity uh, uh, might result in killing someone's dreams. And no one has that right or that power. So I've actually resigned my, my, my time. I've left Fangoria and started my new career as a commodities broker on Wall Street, <laughs> where I'm pulling down nine figures, and it's great. And a big, big cocaine problem, so I have not stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous. And there's a, um, and the, the moment is that there's a moment. Oh, it's just so weird. Despite all this, occasionally you uh like you, you wait. That phrases. It took a few years to realize this. Occasionally, you feel sleepless between the cocaine and all the other binging. But like you eventually found that you had a somehow you had an AO3 account. And there's masses and masses of fanfic about a femrev that you that somebody using your email has written, and you have no memory of doing so. But the cocaine helps. Uh, right, <laughs> everyone, and I believe that's the end of die. Thank you so much. For hey. you're so good. Hey. That was great, Karen. Oh, thank you, and thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to stop the stream now and record this, and hopefully we can edit it. And hopefully, yes, excellent, good stuff. Right, bye. Right, None of this was real. Bye. 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 <laughs>